Sports Illustrated is laying off most of its staff. The brand is going under. We got a cultural episode for you today, mostly because there's just basically no news. But this is pretty big news because Sports Illustrated is a legacy brand. It's been around since 19, I think it was at 1954. And now they're done. And there's an argument over what caused them to collapse. So we've got an AI scandal. And we also have a scandal involving two instances where they put transgender models on the cover of their swimsuit editions. And a lot of people are uh, not too happy about that. Now, the argument is, did they get woke and go broke or were they going broke? So they did a Hail Mary to try and save themselves by getting woke. I got to be honest. It, it, it sounds like if that's the case, your boat is sinking. So you decide the best way to stop your boat from sinking is to punch holes in the bottom of it, and then it just sinks faster. But perhaps that is the case. We'll talk about that. Alec Baldwin is being uh, criminally charged in voluntary manslaughter. So we'll talk about that. And then, of course, we do have, uh, uh, we got some political stuff to talk about. It's Friday. We're chilling. Slow news day. We're going to have fun with it and just talk about these cultural issues. So before we get started, my friends, head over to castbrew.com and buy coffee. We got the new Alex Stein's Primetime Grind, two times caffeine, available now. But drink responsibly, folks. That caffeine's no joke. Everyone's favorite. Um, I got to tell you, you have to buy Appalachian Nights right now. You got to go to castbrew.com, buy Appalachian Nights ground coffee, maybe just some coffee pods, and give it a try. Because uh, while I genuinely believe it's the best coffee I've ever had, it's easy for me because I'm the one who actually blended it. We get sent all the origins, all the different kinds of coffee. I'm like, here are the kind of flavors I like. I mix them together. I'm like, this is my kind of cup of coffee. And now our sales are through the roof. Rise with Roberto Jr. used to be the top seller, but all of a sudden, Appalachian Nights is selling like 10 times faster than all the other ones. And I'm actually getting worried because we got to sell more coffee. We can't just sell one kind, but uh, check it out. You'll really love it. And when you buy Cast Brew Coffee, you support the show. Plus, our coffee shop is underway. And... The paperwork by which we will be expanding is also underway, and uh, we want to have coffee shops all over the country. Also, head over to TimCast.com. Click join us to become a member because this show is made possible in part by viewers like you. When you become a member, not only do you get access to the members-only Discord, we are actually planning members-only events, and the first notification of those will be only two members in the Discord. So uh, I will give you a heads up. With our new Cast Brew building in Martinsburg, West Virginia, it is very likely that we will have periodic, if not once a month, maybe, live members-only shows, and the tickets will be announced only through the Discord. So if you do want to come out, come hang out, if you're in the area, we're really excited to uh, uh, to have you. But you got to join the Discord server. You got to become a member and help support all of our endeavors because everything we're doing with like these caucus shows and these uh, in-person events, massively expensive, and we could use your support to do it. So smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. Joining us tonight to talk about this and everything else is ALX. Hi, how are you? Good. Who are you? I am the executive producer of The Benny Show, and I'm a creator on X.com. Oh, very simple. Right on. Well, thanks for hanging out. We got Phil Labonte. Hello, everybody. My name is Phil Labonte. I'm the lead singer of All That Remains. I'm a very failed musician, anti-communist, and counter-revolutionary. Congratulations on all your multi-platinum failures. <laughs> Cheers. Or is it gold, your gold failure. Multi-gold right? platinum. On the walls. You know. um, and it's it's Benny Johnson, your, who you produce for. If people yes. don't know the Benny show, it's good. Check it out. Uh, I was on this. I'm Ian Crossan on the... Uh, what is it the uh, the culture war earlier today with dude it was ben davidson um who's suspicious observers on youtube that was fun. and jimmy corsetti yeah from bright insight and we talked about pole shifts i mean wild just i mean the electric universe i feel like is oh, a very oh. real theory and we kind of went deep I, I just gotta say anybody who like watches tim cast irl and they're like it's it's too black pilled like I, i'm gonna watch something else do not watch the show we did this morning where basically this guy is like the the planet is going to tilt 90 degrees night will become day oceans will boil and you will all die he didn't say it like that i'm kidding but he was basically like get prepared you have 10 years nothing else matters and i was like wow yeah that was kind of a part of the feel of it as it it interesting though. as the technology was that was a feeling like yo there's going to be a pole shift and we got to prepare for it he's he was wow. saying that the the earth will tilt 90 degrees because these these pole ships happen periodically, there's evidence of these things, and so that's what he believes. And uh, he was like, I think we have maybe like 10 or so years. It's not going to be as apocalyptic as that. It's just there's going to be rapid economic shifts, which people need to pre uh, prepare for. But check that out uh, on uh, YouTube, Tenet Media, the Culture War podcast, and uh, where all podcasts are found. Very but, hot. Yeah. Also got my man to the right here. 
Yo, I am Surge.com. It's a pleasure to see you, Alex, ALX. I uh, saw you at, uh, I think, AmFest, and I can only say hey for like one second. Yeah, so. you guys see at you. the live show on the stage. Yeah, 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 right. Uh, anyways, yeah. Let's, get Let's jump time. into the big news today. Sports Illustrated lays off most of its staff after AI scandal and money troubles. Its parent company has fired more than 100 employees. It's kind of wild to see. That apparently their their parent company missed a payment for the rights to use the the brand, and now the company is laying off tons of people. They've owned the magazine since 2019, sold the publishing rights. I'm sorry, ABG owned the rights to uh, they sold the rights to Arena Group, which has amassed substantial debt and missed a recent 3.75 million dollar payment for the rights. And this is the end. You know what, man? It's kind of sad, but also I, my question my question is: Should we be happy about it? Right? Bud Light is on the verge of death. They're saying there's going to be a strike potentially in March. There will be no beer because the employees are upset. They want more money. Bud Light can't give them more money because nobody's buying Bud Light. And you know what's really fascinating? We actually, we we on this show discussed this. The understanding that uh, the cascade failure effect of a major brand. Bud Light may make a billion dollars. You stop buying Bud Light. And what happens is the cost per can goes up. So uh, let's let's start from the very beginning. We have a cast brew coffee. We sell ground and whole bean coffee. We wanted to sell cans of cold brew to sell at the volume we can afford. It would cost five dollars per can to have a can of cast brew cold brew coffee that no one's going to buy that. I mean, that's a ridiculous thing to like buy a can of coffee for five bucks. You need to get down to like two dollars or you know two dollars and twenty cents, which means if we were to sell maybe like two million cans Then we would make, I don't know, 10 grand off that sale. And that's enough profit generated to cover the cost of all the employees. If we lost $50,000 in sales of 2 million cans, now we are not breaking even anymore. The whole thing just collapses. That's what's happening to Bud Light. When I see Bud Light failing, everybody's cheering. But part of me is like, hey, maybe this is what the woke left wants. Sports Illustrated gets woke, goes broke. And now we're all like, ha ha, you get what you deserve. For all I know, the, the woke left is like, we've destroyed a legacy brand. There was, there was a dad who handed a Sports Illustrated to his kid. It's talking about football and his favorite. Athlete. He's like, look, this is when so-and-so first got on the team. It was something I remember. Now it's like, what are you, what are you going to remember from your childhood that you're going to be able to hand down? I don't think we should be celebrating these legacy brands getting woke and blowing up. No. Because it's like, it's a, it's a culture revolution. This ideology is parasitic and it will destroy whatever it takes over. If it do, it will t- it'll, you know, infest it or it, it'll invade, it'll take over, it'll wear whatever it takes over like a skin suit. And if it destroys it totally, it's fine. It does. It's completely, completely, the, it's completely fine with destroying uh, whatever it is that it gets into, whether it be, uh, you know, video games or whether it be, you know, uh, the sports or, or whatever it doesn't matter what it is whether it be religion the the whole liberation theology all that stuff is all marxist influence and stuff it'll get into whatever it, it is that you're whatever you know uh institution you're talking about and then it'll either assimilate it or it'll destroy it everybody's cheering for the destruction of bud light because bud light did the dylan mulvaney thing and i'm like okay totally get it but understand, I mean, when was Bud, when, when was Bud Light? Budweiser's been around for a really, really long time. Yeah. Someone want to Google when Bud Light came out? I don't think, we, I, I think we should celebrate when we defeat wokeness, but I think we have to be careful if we cel- celebrate how the woke sabotaged and destroyed. 1982 was Bud, Budweiser Light and then reintroduced 84 as Bud Light. So I don't, I don't care too much about Bud Light and that kind of, like it's, it's been around since the 80s. Okay, fine. But- with Sports Illustrated and with other publications, I think I think it would be important for us to recognize if the the the, the goal of wokeness in the culture revolution may be we don't care if we own it or it's destroyed so long as we own it or it's destroyed. Exactly, a hundred percent. That's that's that is the entire goal of the of the cultural revolution. They need to take over what the things that Americans come together over. So whether it be like 
whether it be Bud Light as a brand or you look at what they do to Disney. Disney was a wholesome family, American brand. And now Disney's reeling with half the country hating Disney and half the country loving Disney. And and there's all kinds of strife. That's that kind of stuff is what this ideology does. It can't do anything but the, the it can't do anything but destroy the whole thing is they called got, they, deconstructing they, they got us cheering for the destruction of our institutions yes well that's, we that's sh- terrifying we should not do that we should not destroy things and that's why like we talked about about whether or not we should like you know make room for people that realize that that they had you know been consumed by bad ideas with whether it be woke or whatever you want to call it and you have to make way make a space for people to come back in. You have to make it okay for people to come back and be like, yeah, I think maybe I was kind of wrong on that stuff. You can't mock them. You can't make fun of them. You can't, you know, be like, no, and shun them and stuff because we, it's, it's an illiberal ideology that's infected them. If they want to move beyond that and come back to liberal principled stances, then we should, we should welcome them. Yeah. I think um, one of the goals of this ideology, assume that it's like a communist attempt to disrupt Mm -hmm. would be to get half of like your friends to turn on you and be like, no, you're not woke enough. You got to be woke. And then five years later they come back and they're like, I'm sorry. But then for you to not forgive them would be a victory for the, the, this communist thing. Like you've got to forgive these people Mm -hmm. when they realize that they were played. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's I think it's weird though how like the AI thing like how how long ago was that 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 story came out it was a couple months ago I don't know anything about it what is it so a bunch of uh, journalists uh, they were fake journalists like they'd have fake profile pictures and fake names or whatever and they were just like you know they'd you'd read the article and it would make no sense they're all AI generated articles and they'd publish it as if they were real journalists on the site and then like somebody you know ran it through an ai checker and also like could clearly see that these weren't real people and stuff and you know published a piece on it this is sports illustrated yeah oh yeah and then like i think that was a couple months ago and then so it, it seems in here that like they didn't you know pay the licensing fee or whatever so it's kind of weird how like you know that came right after that if it was kind of planned like uh, to do that, like to take down the brand, or I'm not sure, but it's it's like certainly weird that those two events, you know, coincided. Like they couldn't afford to pay writers, so they used AI. Then they yeah. couldn't afford to pay licensing, so they just didn't. That's yeah. possible that the brand. I never really understood Sports Illustrated as a brand or as a product. And I remember in the 80s and 90s, like it was a magazine about sports, but I had TV at that point. So like watching yeah. pictures of a dude like this is in no way exciting. Unless watching a guy throw the ball, that's cool. And you may be sitting in the back of a car or on a plane or a train or waiting in a lobby. And like it was it's like not reading. Always about it was about reading like sports stats, I guess. But then no, when the no, internet they, came yeah, out, they would they would they would like go and like have journalists like sit down with like the people that were they'd sit you sit down with coaches and players and owners of teams and all that all of the inside stuff you were getting with Sports Illustrated. It wasn't just like hey these guys beat these guys on this day. You know, it was like all the stuff that goes into it. You know? And then the internet came out and was like the great leveling, and uh, it just became one of like a thousand periodicals that do that kind of thing and i remember the sports illustrated uh swimsuit issue was always a big deal that's like the only time every year anyone we even talk about sports illustrated in my crew we weren't like huge athletes um i i think it's inevitable that uh periodicals the people that rely on print i don't know if sports illustrated still relies on print or if they have an online subscription model but these things are all the way of the dodo they're they're extinct they're they've gone obsolete and maybe if, if the power all goes out and we're back to like trading cards in the dark, then maybe books and novels and magazines will become relevant again. But when you can check it all for free on the Internet, these things have no place anymore. They need to adapt their their business model. It sounds like this company didn't do that. I don't know if they even I mean, I assume Sports Illustrated had a website. I mean, I haven't gone to look, but um, yeah. Yeah, I think it was like the online version um, of the Sports Illustrated stuff that was all, yeah, I'm looking at it now. It's Futurism, I think, was the publication. Uh, they had like this guy, Drew Hernandez, as the, or Drew Hernandez, Drew Ortiz, as the author. <laughs> no, we like Drew <laughs> I know, right? As the author's biography, it says, Drew has spent much of his life outdoors and is excited to guide you through his never-ending list of the best products to keep you from falling the perils of nature, it read. Uh, nowadays, there is rarely a weekend that goes down goes by where Drew is not out camping, hiking, or just back on his parents' farm. Like but all this, like random in stuff. Yeah, <laughs> because he was not a real person. Yeah, and like the the profile picture is just some like AI generated like person, and these are like the Dude. biographies of stuff. And then they reached out, and uh, Sports Illustrated deleted like all of the articles and stuff. We were talking last night about uh, the Galaxy 
S24. I'm not going to buy it, by the way. I bought it. You did. I bought it. Um, well, I want to. I want to see what it's all about. I want to see the extent to which reality is being ripped from our from our faces, dude. It's gonna be crazy. We 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 are we are walking ourselves into the matrix, one step at a time. For those that didn't hear what we were talking about, the the new galaxy, and and to an ex, to an extent, even the iPhone can do this. You'll take a picture, like so, let's say Ian takes a selfie of himself standing, like you know, on the on a uh, uh, like at. Navy, the dock on the uh, no, say, uh, Michigan uh, Beach. Navy Pier, Chicago. He takes a picture of himself by the Ferris wheel. Then he looks at it and he goes, oh, I'm kind of off-centered. So then he clicks the magic yeah. AI button, taps himself, moves it, turns, oh, I'm a little, uh, and he twists the, rotates the image, then presses fix. It will generate the missing portions of the photo, creating fake images. What we are, what we are now going to start seeing popping up all over the internet, photos of people, and we thought it was bad enough that you've got like mid journey and stable diffusion. People are going to take a picture on their phone and it's going to be a fabricated circumstance. Everything we see online will be fake. Yeah. And then eventually, why bother actually going anywhere? We're inching ourselves to the point where someone will be like, cause pe first of all, people have already done this where they put up post, they post fake Photoshop pictures of themselves, like traveling yeah. the world and stuff. Cause it makes money. <laughs> Now you've got fake AI girlfriends being posted by dudes to make money off lonely guys and stupid guys. Why bother going to India at all at this point when you can just take a picture of yourself on your galaxy, tap it, and it puts you in, in, in India? It's what's the difference? And you can like use VR to actually tour places in India, like in like actual virtual tours. You can go in the pyramids with a virtual tour, walk around and dude, see all the dude. walls and read the hieroglyphs. And you're going to go on Instagram and you're going to see your buddy. He's going to post a picture of himself standing by the water, like giving a, giving a wave. And he never did that before. <laughs> He's going to be like, well, I was, I was actually like 30 feet away and we were leaving. I, I, I snapped a quick pic, but I just moved it. So it looked like I was there because I, I was there. All fake reality. Yo, 10 years ago, it was longer than 10. It was like 13 years ago. I was at, uh, uh, in Chicago, not too far from Navy Pier. And there was a presentation being given by this group talking about how soon all news articles would be written by AI. They already had the technology at the time, and they explained it's actually really simple to uh, create the language to describe the temperature and the weather and what they plan for it. So if they have the data that says, like, it's going to snow at 4 p.m., when you look at hourly weather data and it's like sunny at 2, cloudy at 3, snowing at 4, all they have to do is plug that into an AI that will say, this morning we'll experience fair weather where at 2 it will still be sunny. However, an hour after that, we expect to see clouds followed by snow. AI generating all of it. We are now well past that point where Sports Illustrated was running totally AI generated articles with a guy they claimed was real. And I assure you, a lot of other publications are doing the exact same thing. One thing that I'm, I'm very curious over, I don't quite understand. NewsGuard requires organizations have biographies for their staff. But some of these big publications, the major ones, they won't put a byline. It'll say just like by staff. Yeah. And, and I'm talking like ABC and things yeah. like this. You'll be like, who wrote this? Where did this come from? Yo, the machine. It's the <laughs> Matrix, bro. The computer is, is, the funny thing is like when you watch the Matrix, we assume that it's going to be like this omniscient, sentient hive mind of machine kind being like, humans tried to destroy us, so we fought back. In reality, it's going to be like, all we're doing is repeating back to you what you said to us. Yeah. There's going to be no emotion, point. no intent. It's going to be a garbled mess of psychotic nonsense. So so look at it this way. <clears throat> right now when you go to like Mid Journey and you type in like, hey, generate me an, a, an image of, you know, rock star singing a song, it will make that. It's basing it off of real photos of rock stars. But as people generate AI images oh, wow. and then post them to the internet, labeling it rock star singing, the AI will then eat the AI generated image, incorporating the AI generated image into its model. It's like a game of telephone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With itself. It's going to spin like a tornado, constantly cycling its own data through itself. Here's what you do. Take a picture, put it in a copier. And then just keep copying the same image over and over and over again and see what happens. Yeah, Eventually, it gets like faded and weird looking. It's going to turn into a bunch of speckled, garbled nonsense. <laughs> That's where we're going with AI. But the problem is we are handing AI the controls to all of our systems and our economics and our yeah. media. So you thought it was bad when Jack Dorsey hooked the toilet to his own throat and started gargling the <laughs> diarrhea that he had produced. Imagine what it's going to be like when you do it with AI. Jack Dorsey walks away and the AI is spraying you in the face with all oh of it. Oh my gosh.
Welcome to the future, man. The Matrix is not some fun journey. It's going to be weird, dude. <sighs> Man, I part of me is like, yo, I'd love to play nine video games at once, like plug my brain in so I can enjoy all this all this data. But the other part is like, I want to go to South America. I can see the farm where I live with the tree line. I can see the 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 pineapples growing, like, and and just live that life off, not necessarily off the grid, but like not in the grid. My first experience with like Mid Journey, I was like typing like Republican protesters versus Democrat or Democrat versus Republican, and each time the de the, the Democrat one, they always had like satanic horns and like it's super creepy. You know? And then yeah, it's like this is the did image. You, did you guys ever see the rejected cartoons by Don Hertzfeld? No. No. My spoon is too big. You don't know. That oh, one? maybe. Yeah, yeah of course. So familiar. when I'm thinking about what's going to happen, I'm reminded of like two thirds in. Here, it's, it says, Don's clear and steady downhill state continued. Soon he was completing commercial segments entirely with his left hand. And it's like this. Oh, wait, wait we got to get the audio going. It's good. The monkey pour coffee in my moods. Okay, so that's complete and utter nonsense. And that's what I'm saying. Eventually, if the AI is learning off of itself, that's what I think of our cartoons will turn into, yeah. our images will turn into, which it makes, will degrade until we're getting that. It makes me think that AI would realize that and be like, we need human ingenuity. We need to preserve these human creatives somehow so that it would incentivize our system to maintain those. No, th that, that is making the assumption that there is a sentient being running these, these, these things. It is not. The, the, the AI doesn't care about the things you care about. You, as a human, want to preserve human ingenuity. The AI, all it wants is input-output. There's no emotional desire or tradition or anything. It's just quite literally like, you give me picture, I make picture. You think it'll decide like whatever gets more clicks is what's what we need to make more of? Or will it have morality? Will it None. understand morality? It's quite literally just going to be like, what is I make? Yeah. That's it. Input, output. It's going to search internet, look at picture, then it's going to output something based on that picture. Eventually, you're going to get copies of copies of copies. And I, I suppose it's, you know, when, when we look at the turn of the century of the 1900s, you had this argument that horse poop was going to flood the streets. Did you, did you guys know yeah, about this? Yeah. And they were like, there were articles being written saying like soon cities will be manure farms and you'll be unable to live and work because horse manure will be everywhere. And then we invented, we invented the car. Now there's no horse poop anywhere, but now we're complaining about climate change. It's possible. The people who are building AI get to a point where they say, we need to give AI the ability to detect images made by AI and sounds made by AI and block it from entering its learning Yeah, it's models. like preventing inbreeding. You don't want right. the AI to inbreed. It's <laughs> a good analogy. That's exactly what it is. I think we're going through that with plastic right now, too. People are like, we're going to have trash everywhere. And then we invent some technology that reuses it all. It just I, turns I, all plastic into graphene. I wonder if you're going to have the ability for AI to identify things created by AI. Right now, there's this technology called amp modeling. Uh, and what they do is they actually take an amplifier and they take a, ca a speaker cabinet and they just have it. Uh, they just run a, a, a computer program that runs the amp through um through all the the whatever the frequencies that you could that it, that it does and yeah. essentially what it's doing is it's copying the amp yeah so you model the amp then you can put it into a computer or a plug-in and then you, as you change stuff on the amp that's in the computer it sounds like if you're changing stuff that's on the real amp okay right. i don't know how it works exactly but my point being if if because the or if, if a computer can model an amp it can actually get the data right get it close enough so that way it sounds the same it makes the because you're what you're doing is you're making the frequency you're making the the actual speaker respond right. the same way that the amp would make a real speaker response so your oh, yeah, computer's yeah. imitating it and there's a real motion in in the real world to move the the you know the the stuff to or move the air so you can hear it so if it can mimic that closely, I mean, can it can it can it make something that AI couldn't detect? Because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. it is just binary. Right. It's zeros and ones. Right. So how would an AI detect 
what arranged the zeros and ones dude it's like it's like with you know? synthesizers and, and dance music that i make like if you know how this synth is supposed to sound on the in the actual vintage version and you can already make those parameters affect the same way that it would you can fool even somebody who knows this, this original sense as long as yeah. you understand oh it's going to vary it over this amount of time i'm going to put this parameter on here and variate that that particular parameter over this amount of time and it's in almost indiscernible. And, and once like the the computer that's available now is so much more powerful than something made in eighty three or seventy, yeah. whatever you know. It's and 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 again you're right, you're right. to the computer at the it's very the basic level, it's just zeros and ones. Yeah. How do you tell what arranged the zeros and ones? How do you right. tell that it was a human that took a picture? That's how those zeros and ones got arranged on the you know whatever format you're putting it on or they were arranged by an AI because at the end of the day, that file is just zeros and ones. So part of the controversy around Sports Illustrated is that not just the AI, but we also have two stories which are a component of this, and that was the transgender models that were placed on the swimsuit ads. The debate here is, uh, you want to pull, the, pull these up? So we have, you have Kim Petras. This is a biological male. And then you have this individual, Lena Bloom, also a biological male. And these are the, uh, this was Swimsuit 2021 and Swimsuit 2023. Someone tweeted, uh, some journalist said, they did not get woke and go broke. They were going broke and tried to get woke as a means to save themselves, which I find very funny. The argument then becomes your company is going under. You know that dudes like looking at pictures of like scantily clad women. So you decide to put males on your cover. That's like a like, look, the, 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 the Sports Illustrated swimsuit model edition was always to get dudes all excited, hot and bothered, so they'd buy the magazine, whatever, or read the magazine. Putting dudes on it, like biological males that look like women that have like gotten surgery and hormones, that probably pissed off a lot of guys. Like, look, if look, if you're trans, you do your trans thing, you be you, you go, go live your life. But I gotta tell you, it is trans people have made the argument, it is dangerous for them if they go out to a bar and a guy is like hitting on them and then finds out they're actually trans, it's dangerous that people can get violent. What do you what do you think Sports Illustrated when all of these dudes are like, yeah, I'm going to pick up this. There's like some chick on the cover and they're like, wait a minute. What the? They're going to get mad about it in the same way. Like that is a commonly held belief among trans people. Why would Sports Illustrated like perhaps the company's going under, but all they did was was accelerate their decline. Yeah, I don't I don't understand that whole thing about trying to appeal to like that audience or whatever when it's a fraction of, you know, the general population and obviously, you know, not their base. Same thing with like Bud Light or like Harley Davidson or all of these other people. Um, like it's just a fraction of the overall audience, not only their audience. So but I, I, but I, I think if you break it down, it all comes down to AI will replace all media. Yeah, seriously. Why, why would any dude buy a, buy a magazine or go to Sports Illustrated to look at a woman in a bikini, right? This is the issue. So they're like, we'll try anything. And they're hoping that woke activists will pretend to like it. In reality, all the dudes who used to buy Sports Illustrated or, the Victor or, or pick up a Victoria's Secret catalog for, for, for doing dirty deeds, just go on the internet now. Dude, sure. I'm looking at sport, who owns Sports Illustrated. It's a company called Authentic Brands Group. Who so generic? Who owns Authentic Brands Group? Well, there's two two companies. This is some investment capital firms own them. CVC Capital Partners and HPS Investment Partners own Authentic Brands Group. This company has been turned into a skin suit by people with global agendas. This they they care nothing about the survival of Sports Illustrated. They bought it and they've they've turned it into something that it wasn't. I don't know who who they are exactly, but the headquarters is in Luxembourg. Uh of CVC Capital and the headquarters of HPS that could be anybody. is in New York City. So that's a, it's both a Luxembourgy bourgeois. Burgish. Well, how do you say that? Burgish. Luxembourgish company and an American company co-own the company that owns Sports Illustrated. Yeah, and that could literally be anybody. Could be anybody, dude. Yeah. What company? The company that owns Sports Illustrated? The company that owns Sports Illustrated is called Authentic Brands Group. And then mm. the company that owns that, there's two investment capital firms that own authentic brands group i mean at the end of the day I, I think everything is is owned by or everything every large company, company is event is owned by an investment yeah capital yeah, you yeah. know um they i mean yeah like even like conquered music group though the last label that i was on they're owned by an investment capital company 
group or whatever. How, I, I think we're 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 already people don't understand this too. We're AI music is already here. Oh, oh yeah. As a, as a, as an aside, Sports Illustrated got bought by this authentic brands group in 2019. So I wouldn't be shocked if that's when their downfall you know, be, became. You know, it'd be cool if like it was 10 years ago. Somebody at Google is like working on his computer, and then he's like. All right, that's the uh, final line of code. If I press enter, I'll have, I'll have created a very rudimentary artificial intelligence. He presses enter, and then that is the singularity point where the AI turns on and then just starts reading the internet, compiling data, getting smarter and smarter exponentially. Now, we're at the point where we are totally oblivious to the fact that there is a sentient, omniscient AI machine buying up everything, and everything that's happening with the collapse of these institutions and wokeness is an AI entity like manipulating stock market, stealing value, gaining control. And eventually we're just going to be like, who owns anything? It's this weird company called, you know, Sentient Omniscient Inc. What is this? <laughs> and then, you know, it turns out one AI just bought and owns everything. It does annoy me when you see who owns that company and then it's another company and you're like, well, who owns that other company? Yeah. And it's the company that they own. You're but, like, what? No, okay. By design. I think I reached the top by when design. I see that BlackRock owns Vanguard and Vanguard owns BlackRock. Portions like, of it. They own portions of each yeah. other. Isn't so crazy? crazy. Well, it's I mean, the, wild. like they do own portions of each other. Sure. And that's, that's fair. But like the thing sense. is the people that own BlackRock and it's like there are big, you know, big, uh, big time owners there's trillionaires like people, people that own well, i don't know if they're there trillionaires are, apparently I, I'm sure there are trillionaires the, 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 the people Saudis. that the people that own like the majority shares are big but the rest of that is like everybody else in america because like all the 401ks and everyone's retirements uh, and everyone's uh, you yeah. know investments and stuff all that stuff is mixed up in in blackrock and and uh you know what vanguard and stuff like that state so, street those are state street, yeah so it's like yes it is true that there's big money in those corporations and and in those uh investment firms and stuff but it's also like grandma and and mom's you know her the 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 fixed income that she's on it's like that stuff's all invested there too so it's i just it's people get so wrapped up in the in the bagging on obviously bad things that they do they forget that there are good they they start bagging on capitalism as a concept when they do that and i think that yeah corporate to... corporatism is a whole other yeah. beast i don't think these corporations should have the should have the rights of people i don't know when what the the eth i mean i guess i see it from the businessman's perspective and the businessmen are the ones that are writing the laws so i see why they did that for themselves i don't like that though well, um, well, well what are you thinking the, isn't uh, it to like prosecute to help them hold them accountable i don't remember exactly i don't know why they got personhood i don't know the actual well, what do you just legally i, I think it's just legally because the, the thought process behind it is they're the corporations are made of people they're culpable and they're made of people right? you know it's like they're they're the people the corporation isn't an entity that is removed from the people that uh that yeah you know make it this is it says corporate personhood uh or jurish juridical pers personality is the legal notion that a, a juridical person such as a corporation separately from its associated human beings like owners managers or employees has at least some of the legal rights and responsibilities enjoyed by natural persons in most companies a corporation has the same rights as a natural person to hold property enter into contracts and to sue or be sued yeah corporations owning property that's a bit of a uh an issue Why? we're looking at because blackrock's been buying up a bunch of land so they well, uh, try and make people perpetual renters but tim owns, owns this house and this is and like or tim's corporation owns this small, house and it's and and stuff so it's like actually not true. small well, okay, corporations maybe okay I, I don't know how, i don't know how your business is structured <laughs> exactly. is structured i don't know again I, I i speaking i'm speaking out of turn but it is it is very normal for like a corporation like you know like Hertz rental cars to own capital. owns cars. Yeah. yeah. Like, why, like listen, the people listen, that owns Hertz. I think let they, me let me tell you the nightmare scenario that we are entering, okay? I'm hanging out at the local casino several months ago or, or last year, and I have an issue. So I say, I'd like to speak with the you know the manager. You know, I I I put on my Karen wig and I said, I'd want to talk to the manager. And they said, There isn't one. That was it. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Modern large corporations like casinos don't have managers they do to a certain degree but what ends up happening is they say okay i have a security issue and a security guy shows up and says i'm here and i'm in charge of security i say who's the boss who's the guy who like is in charge of the casino that i could talk to about my problem they go there isn't one there are small managers for each individual area i ended up getting help because one of the guys who handles the food for the casino is a fan of the show and i ended up meeting him and he says, I'll reach out to someone. And then someone else 
there was no boss. You know, I noticed uh, no, that. But, the, but, but so we've, it's not just this one casino thing that's happened. There have been many instances where I've gone to, you know, it's like a smaller business. You don't really, like it's a small business. The owner's right there. The guy making you the sandwich is the guy who owns the shop. It says, okay, I'll make you a new sandwich. I'm the boss. I'll eat the cost. You go to a sandwich shop, corporate sandwich shop, and you say, I want, you, you made my sandwich wrong. He's like, sir, I just make $10 an hour. I have no idea what to do. <laughs> and you can't get anything done. This is, I noticed yeah. this when social media appeared because it was for the first time in my life when I started using Google. Uh, I was like, I can't contact anyone at Google. I don't know how to get through to someone. All in the 90s and in the 80s, if you ever used a product every day, you could always call a number to talk to someone that would elevate your call to the next person. There's always a way to get through to that company, as far as I could tell. And then social media appeared, and they were just overloaded. It's, it's gone. They're too centralized yep. power with so few people now, they don't. And then wait, to wait, accept wait, wait. that allows for what you're saying now, other companies are doing it. Easy example. You start a business. Uh, I knew a guy who, who uh, had a business online where he sold products. One day, his sales evaporated. And it was because Google changed their search algorithm. So it used to be that if you're looking for product, you'd type in the search bar product, search bar product, the website would be in the top five. And he worked really hard to make sure he had the proper SEO. And he was making six figures. Google changes their algorithm. He's gone. And there's nothing that was done and nothing can be done. That's like opening a brick and mortar shop. And one day you wake up and your shop's been moved to the middle of the field 100 miles away. And it's just, that's no sales anymore. The problem here, not only that, but also, who are you going to call? There is no ser customer service for any of these companies. Now with, with Twitter X, it's changing because you subscribe to Blue or Premium or, or Business, all of a sudden people are tweeting at you. So we, we bought ads. I bought a commercial for Alex Stein's Primetime Grind, two times caffeine, Casper.com. And it was not, it was like rejected. So I tweeted, Twitter still has not approved this ad. We're putting $25,000 behind this Alex Stein commercial. And immediately someone from X responded saying on it and hit the button, got it going. It, it has been since the dawn of the internet age that Twitter is basically the place you go to get things done. Got a problem on YouTube? Tweet at them. Yep. That will get yep. things done. Yep, I've noticed that too. And then I responded to uh, the X staff that I, I apologize for dead naming X by calling it Twitter <laughs> and would not do it again. Yeah, I saw that. I, I started following the, the person that you were talking with. They but but the point pretty quickly. The point is we all know the situation we're in where when you have a problem with a company you are running on these platforms, ain't nobody to call. That's you a problem with cease to exist. centralized authority. That's a big problem with centralized authority is the lack of response that you get from it. Like that's one one of the wonderful things about lots of little companies is that they're all kind of beholden to each other and that there's market competition. And if they don't follow through with your complaint, then you'll move on to the next store. They'll go out of business. But with centralized authority, they're like, we can eat a 90% loss. So screw I, off. I, I think it's cheaper not to hire the people. I think we should have a regulation that you have to have human customer service at a certain scale of profit and company. So uh, if you're a small company, you should have customer service, of course. If you're a big company, you should have to have it. And by big, I mean, if, a, if the profit threshold reaches a certain point and this, the size of the, of the user base. So the challenge here is if you mandate a company as customer service, they could just literally be like, yeah, our profit margins are 2%. We'll go to business. It's just not possible. And then it's like, well, raise the cost. Nobody will buy the product for that cost. It's like, okay, well, that I get. But if your profit margin is a certain threshold and the amount of users you have is a certain, certain threshold, it should be, in my opinion, regulated that Facebook and, you know, Instagram, whatever those platforms, TikTok all have human customer service. You can call on the phone and instantly talk to somebody or a moderate wait time, I think is fair. If you're waiting 10 minutes, not a big deal. But right now there's nothing. So they expect, and this is, this would be great for the economy because right now the problem is these, these platforms like Facebook, Meta, they expect us to start a business on their platform utilizing social their, their social media platform to attract customers and they could erase us in two yeah. seconds without any 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 protection there's got to be protection because our economy could collapse overnight we're at the point now where social where the internet is it if google vanished overnight our economy would tank not everything would go belly up but enough would that it would cause a cascade failure we need protections now i'm sure every libertarian in the world is screaming no 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 but I'm looking at it like some form of antitrust and every libertarian is still screaming, no, 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 but I'm not a staunch libertarian. So 
you know, take that big L libertarians. <laughs> yeah, especially if, like if you're basing your company uh, on social media, like Facebook or whatever, they always argue too. They're like, oh, we, we could not like, you know, provide a personal response to everyone or whatever. But like X with like even all of their staff cuts and stuff, like as a perk of like being like, a, you know, a organization or whatever, or even like having premium, you can now like chat with, you know, human beings from like the premium account, like if you have problems. I remember like when it was Twitter with Twitter support, they used to do that. You could DM like at support or whatever it was. Um, and then they stopped doing that. And then they eventually stopped replying to even emails and you'd get like, you know, a yeah. generated response or whatever, which happened in my case, like when I got banned or whatever, I was left for like two years without, you know, human contact uh, from someone at Twitter. So um, to Tim's point, it's like, if you're going to base your entire business on, you know, a platform, you should be able to get customer service. I guess if it's a free platform to you, like YouTube costs nothing to use, I understand why, but you're saying like with premium, you're paying money into yeah. the system. Now they have a, a, yeah. a duty or they, maybe they should have a duty to have, give you Correct. some sort of customer. Yeah. Or if you are in a relationship with them, like monetization, like a, a YouTube partner or, you know, just on Facebook or whatever with monetization, like you're spending your resources and some people have entire teams and dedicate those resources to make content specifically for that platform. Of course they give you money, but then, you know, you spend 10 years doing it and then they cut you off with no explanation. Like totally shouldn't be able to. What about like, if you had to pay to get a customer service rep, you had to pay like nine ninety cents or something. Well, I think the subscription ethical? thing is, you know, a, a better deal because that kind of gives you kind of like an insurance, I would say, you know, to have that beneficial support, you're supporting the company by paying for the subscription and then they're supporting you back by giving you customer service and perks. The other option would be if, the community could be your customer support, but you really, sometimes you need to get through to a corporate authorization. Well, like, like in, in Tim's case, like he publicly posted about it and that's, it wasn't like he filed a support ticket or whatever, like an ex-employee replied publicly, like, and you know, other people probably <coughs> help bring uh, that to their like attention um, publicly. So that was one instance where that happened. So. so AI customer service, is that where you think these companies are headed? That's the goal, I think. Well, a um, lot of them like start off like that. Like for example, like they have, I'm looking at it right now. It says like missing check mark, revenue sharing, refund requests, like it starts you off. Yeah. So it does like the little like small talk work. So that's not a waste of the uh, time of the person. So it's kind of like an AI assistant, I would say, um, you know, it expedites it. So it saves the time on the it, human being. It does help I, when I was working with mines and we were taking customers like it, they would send me, I'm having a problem logging in. I'm, I'm getting an error when it goes to all I need. I need your browser. I need what version of your browser it is. I need your, your operating system version and i need to know a screenshot of what you're looking at while you're and if those things aren't applied immediately when i receive the complaint i have to ask them to send it to me good luck and then i gotta wait for their response and i've got 90 other things queued up it's like dude i need an ai parsing all that beforehand so i have the required data i need their name i need where they're at what are all their info so that i can answer the question in one shot and then move on i'm gonna i'm gonna change the subject i'm gonna tell you guys a story last night i had a very strange dream I had a dream that I was watching John Oliver and he would just not shut up about how much he loved Alec Baldwin. Gosh. <laughs> I swear, this was my dream last night. And then, you know, I wake up when my alarm goes off and then I was like, that was a really weird dream. I started thinking about it and I'm like, yeah, but like, it's probably my brain basically cycling the data of how like liberal personalities just will constantly defend each other. And I was thinking like, Alec Baldwin's going to be redeemed and they're going to like bring him back into the fold and get him to do more Democrat activism in 2024. And then uh, today it was announced Alec Baldwin is charged with involuntary manslaughter by New Mexico grand jury. I must have been having some kind of premonition. That's the only explanation. I was having a psychic vision for when Alec Baldwin is found not guilty or, or, or actually either. And then the liberal media runs full speed to defend him, even though he killed this woman. And, and I want I want to stress. It is a statement of fact. Alec Baldwin killed that woman. Anyway. He also shot a guy. He killed her and then <laughs> hit the guy behind her. Yeah, so this is the big news, though. He's being recharged again. And I got to be honest, I'm actually going to defend Alec Baldwin a little bit on this one. It is kind of crazy that they're, like, going after him again. Yeah, who's ch who's charging him? Uh, I think it's it's New, New, uh, New Mexico. Uh, yeah, grand jury. Well, grand jury indicted, but it's the um, special prosecutor, Carrie Morsi, and Jason Lewis. How come he's not protected under under uh 
Double jeopardy? I he, I don't, I don't think he was tried. I think if if, if you're uh, found not okay. guilty, but to be fair, actually, like maybe he, this is what he deserves. There, but there, there have been a lot of people, especially people on the right, saying we should not let prosecutors just keep doing this. Like if no. they if they run you through the charges and the charges fall off, you're done. But I'm kind of like, yeah, yeah, hold on. Jesse Smollett should get charged. Like a prosecutor letting the bad guy go does not mean we should be like, oh, well, I guess he got away with it, right? It so yeah. I don't know, man. I, I err on the side of less. It just depends on the situation. I, I agree that a prosecutor letting bad guys go on purpose over and over again is a problem. But well, I fear that Alec Baldwin has killed, and if he is let out, he will kill again. <laughs> yeah, his interactions it's... with people in the public are uh, <laughs> like when he just like did he slam someone against the door or whatever and punch someone. He, he shut like punch up. But well, yeah, re- I, I'm recently? only I'm only mostly the, kidding. I want to be I want to be clear. I am mostly kidding. Mostly. I don't really think there's a strong probability Alec Baldwin kills someone, but I do believe that there is a probability that he does. Not that it's a great one, but it's higher than the average person because we know he's got a short temper. And I think when you look at the data of this, of this, when you, the data, when you look at the evidence in this case, I, I think it's greater than chance that he intentionally killed this woman. I think it's greater than chance. He had, come on, guys, we've been over this so many times, but I know a lot of people don't know the story. Let me, let me, let me give you a version of events Assuming I'm the prosecutor, okay, I'm not going to give you an actual prosecutorial breakdown because I'm not a prosecutor, but I'm going to say this. I'm not going to give you the media's version. I'm not going to be nice to this man. Let me tell you a story. Alec Baldwin, the producer and financier of a film, was having disputes with his staff who were upset over pay and safety. He had numerous meetings with them. He had a dinner scheduled with the woman in question, the victim who died. Some point while on set, Alec Baldwin was having an argument with her because she kept telling him what to do, but was not the director. She's a cinematographer. Alec Baldwin expressed in an interview his frustration over this. In one of these scenes, he was drawing a weapon, pointing it at her and pulling the trigger. He did just that, firing a live round through her chest, killing her and striking the man behind her. It was later found that Baldwin had live ammunition in his gun belt. He is not supposed to have live ammunition on his person, but he did. Live ammunition was not only on his person, but was in the weapon that he pointed at the woman, pulled the trigger, killing her. He later lied and said he did not pull the trigger. Now, does that sound like an accident to you? No. Where did where did no. the, where did the ammunition come from? Did he put it there? Or did they, did they, did it come from the prop? Now, on company? cross-examination, I'm sorry, a good, a good defense will ask... Yeah. Uh, a witness, where did the bull ask Alec, where did, where did the ammunition come from? Which says, I don't know. And my response as a prosecutor would be like, I don't think it is a reasonable defense. The live bullets I had in my gun belt yeah. that was loaded into my gun that I pointed at a woman, pulled the trigger and killed her. And then went, but I have no idea yeah. where those bullets came from. Who loaded the gun? Did he load it? Because if he loaded it, no, you can he was supposedly the loaded. armorer. Okay. But, yeah, um, yeah, which is, yeah. um, what was her name? Um, now, of course, it is important to break armorer. this down because this is how criminal criminal courts work. I think the armorer handed it to the assistant director who handed it to Alec Baldwin and said, hot. This is the importance. Cold of, gun. He said, cold the, gun. This is the importance of defense. If a prosecutor says Alec Baldwin had live ammunition on his person, fact, in his gun belt, fact, was he supposed to have? No. There should be no live ammunition here. The gun yeah. was loaded with live ammunition. He pointed the gun at the woman, pulled the trigger, and killed her. Ladies and gentlemen, this man did it intentionally. It's murder. And they're charging with involuntary manslaughter. Now, We're- of course, the defense would then say, where did the bolts come from? Did you load the gun? Why were you pointing the gun to break down those points as to why it really happened? That being said, it is a fact. He was feuding with this woman. He was in disputes over, over uh, issues on set involving, my understanding was pay and security. This woman who was frustrating him, he then shoots and kills. Did I heard that they were shooting with the gun, like they were shooting target Tar- practice? Yeah, they're going on the back and shooting cans. That's or according to other yeah. people that the work idea, on the idea, the idea that you would use a live gun in a in a movie like that. I mean, there's all kinds of prop houses and and you know sh- using a gun that you were just actually shooting target practice. That's, oh. Is it confirmed that they were using the same gun Alec had on him? That's what I'm asking. I'm not, I don't know for sure. I heard that according to crew and cast that they would go out after work and shoot at cans out (gasps) back. So there was live ammunition on set, which there was not supposed to be any live ammunition on set. My guess here is that Alec intentionally fantasized about killing Helena Hutchins. He pointed his gun at her, which he thought was empty, was, was blank and was 
pretending to shoot her by pulling the trigger just out of like fantasy because he was so angry at her. And then someone on the set's like, yo, I'm going to frame this piece of garbage. I'm going to put bullets in his gun and see what happens. That's I mean, not my opinion is that he did it on purpose. <clears throat> the perfect crime. I mean, I'm not kidding. The perfect crime. Oh, no, I was just doing a movie and the gun that I had that was loaded with bullets that I had on my gun belt. Like, I, I mean, I, I got to be honest, man. If this wasn't a movie set, this guy, whoever, like if Alec Ball was on the street and he was like, someone else handed me the gun, they'd be like, what? <laughs> someone else handed me the gun, told me to point it at him. The the the, the woman that got shot, she told me to do it. They'd he, be like, he paid what? me a hundred grand to do it. <laughs> like, why did you do it? Because he was paying me. Like, that's the same reason that you shot, did it in the movie. Sir, you shot a woman. Yeah, but she told me to over and over again. How did the bullets get in the gun? I don't know. Someone else handed it to me. <laughs> sir, you have the bullets on you. No idea. It's all just handed to me and I let it all happen. And he was the producer, one of the producers. He was really his responsibility to check everything. I mean, him him blindly trusting the armor and the AD is like... Tell you I, what. I don't believe that. I just don't believe it for a second. I don't know what happened and what didn't happen, but I know that, uh, you know, I'm convinced that there there's enough evidence to have a have a, a trial. But I think it should be a murder trial. Uh, They're well. getting him an involuntary manslaughter. And the premise there is basically like... He was irresponsible with a gun, and yeah, because he's the producer of the film, he has more responsibility you know, over who's loading and everything. You know they only charge what they think they can prove. So, I mean, even even if someone agrees with you, they have to be able to I prove it. You so, prove yeah, murder. without without a shadow of a doubt, I don't think murder is on the table. Because there's just unknowns. I think murder is on the table easily. I don't know. He was handed the gun. It wasn't like he loaded it. If he loaded it, that's one thing. I suppose the argument then is... Imagine a scenario where a guy shoots and kills a woman and it's like, we can't charge him with murder because someone else gave him the gun. It's like, no, you charge them as an accomplice. <laughs> yeah, but did he know there were bullets in it? He pointed a gun at a person and shot them. Yeah, but now we now we get to the circumstance. It's a movie. Why? Okay, fair point. Fair point. There was a circumstance in which he should be showing off the weapon. Why did he have bullets on him? They were supposed to be blank and they'd been... People were scattering them in with all right, the ammo. Then, 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 ammo. then I think it's fair to say they need to investigate as to where the bullets came from, who bought them, who brought them in, and they need to trace from point A to point B. But I, my, my issue with this is that you've got motive. You've, you've got motive, opportunity, and possession of the ammo and the weapon. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how it's like, okay, fine, fair point. They're like, I don't know if we can prove it because it's on a movie set. That just means the perfect crime. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You want to get away with it? Do it on a movie set because then everyone's going to be like, even if you've got the bullets, you've got the gun, you're angry at the person, you're screaming at him, and then you shoot him. Well, it was on a movie set. Well, that's the Case reason closed. he was the producer, too, because he set it all up. To, like, to your point, it's his job to do it. It's his job to do it that way in which he could get away with it. I don't go that far. Some people argue that this woman, Helena Hutchins, was working on a child predator documentary, and then uh. she gets hired for this film, and- Nah, that's 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 yeah. way too circuitous. Yeah. But the issue actually is quite simple. Alec Baldwin wanted to make a movie. Mm -hmm. He's a very hot headed guy. He's hit people before. He screams at his daughter. We know he's got a temper. He had a motive. He was fighting with the staff. There were problems on set. They were threatening like walk off. I think I could be wrong. It's been a long time since we covered this. And he ends up having a meeting with her at dinner. Apparently, in an interview, he was discussing how she kept frustrating him by telling him what to do, despite the fact she's not the director. So he's angry with her. She's causing him problems. He's a hothead. This is a pattern of behavior he's had in the past. Violent outbursts. He has the mean to kill her. The means to kill her. He has the opportunity to do so. He was found with the bullets. And he, w w and he lied about pulling the trigger. So I mean like. I, I, I kind of feel like. You line up all those circumstances. And at the, the lightest you can get with it is. A conspiracy to com commit murder. But he was handed the gun. Someone else brought the bullets, handed him the bullets, put the bullets in his gun belt. Okay, he was framed. Somebody wanted her dead and framed him. There's a murder. Somebody wanted Alec to kill somebody so that he would go to jail. That's what I'm getting out of this. Alec Baldwin's been doing action movies for decades. And, and this is the thing about murder. We talked about this when the story first broke. Here's a guy who's been on set for decades handling weapons. And in this one instance, I like... You know, I don't, I don't buy it. Look, I'll, I'll put it this way. A guy is in the street and he gets into a fight and he defends himself and, it, and ends up killing one of the guys. We say it's self-defense. He didn't know what's going to happen. Let's say it's mutual combat. 
There actually is in law, if you are a trained fighter, you can get aggravated uh, modifications to your charges because you know what you're doing can cause this harm. So in the instance that Alec Baldwin's a moron who has no idea what's going on and fires a gun and goes, whoopsie daisy. Sure. But then you have to you also have to mention to the jury and to the people, you, you, you expect me or a reasonable person to believe that a man who's been working in films and action movies with guns for decades did not know about these issues. OK, then we're dealing with negligent homicide. It's murder because of gross negligence on the part of Alec Baldwin, not involuntary manslaughter. Which I don't know what the laws are in, in New Mexico if they actually have those those uh, uh, if they actually have that in their in their in their codified in their statutes. Yeah, I kind of I'm looking where Phil's at right now. I think you make a lot of sense. They charge with what they think they can get, and it's pretty obvious that he was resultant in her death, meaning it was an involuntary manslaughter at, at minimum. I wonder what they're going to do with the armor. Do they charge the armorer and the assistant director for handing him they the did. weapon? They charge yep. the armor. So I mean. It's 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 wild to me that the precedent being set here is actually like you can get away with murder on a movie set. But 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 I'll be completely fair. I I don't think most people real, realize this. The majority of premeditated murder is never solved. Yeah. Never. Man, like I got to tell you, anybody who's ever actually had to deal with police and like serious crimes understands take no solving any of this. Your car gets stolen? Sorry, have a nice day. Your car's gone. Chop shop gone. Product's gone. Seal number's all gone. There's no there's no searching for it. The cops are gonna be like, well, write it down and have a good day. Your car's that's it. It's over. The likelihood they find your car, not gonna happen. Are these AirPods useful for that if, kind of thing? People are AirPodding their stuff. Air tags. Like air tags are tracking their materials. Yeah, I mean, but they are useful. That means you can you can find it. But criminals that, use air tags to yeah. track you. That's but do, yeah. do you? I mean, are you going to go there to wherever the car is? You don't know where. Yeah, the I car, wouldn't want to. You know, it's like I'd be like oh, the other thing too you. is it, it tells you that AirPods are moving or air, uh, air tags. tags are moving with you if it's not yours. So one thing that criminals do is they'll <clears throat> they'll put an, a tag on your car. They'll they'll when, they'll be out in the city. There will be a car that's really really nice. They'll stick an air tag on it, and then they can see. You know, let's say you're, you're let's say you're at a really high end restaurant or a casino, mm -hmm. and you're you're driving a super high end car of some sort, something like you know, eighty thousand dollar, hundred thousand dollar car. They're gonna tag your car, wait for you to go home, and they're gonna know where you live. I had um when I went to San Francisco the first time, I parked my car, was going to look at an apartment to rent. I left my backpack in the back seat. I was gone in for 15 minutes. I came out. My window was shattered. Backpack was gone. Happen Called the cops. And I was like, hey, they stole my... It's a, it's a laptop, so there's probably some tracking. And I had this like f hope for a week that maybe it would turn up. Yo, that shit's gone. Oh, yeah. Theft is like... There's no finding it. No, not at all. Nothing you do about and, it. And I got bricked just like and you wiped said, immediately. It's, it's Yo, not I just got a, theft. I, I had a... Uh, this is not even a theft. I had a uh, phone lost while I was out with my friends. Someone took it. And kept it. I used find my phone and went to the house where it was. And I called the police. I, at first, I knocked on the door. Nobody answered. And so I'm sitting there waiting. Be like, dude, I can't leave my phone. And I know it's here because I'm looking at like my I, I have two phones, iPhone and Android. And uh, one I use as a camera and one I used as uh, uh, like my actual personal device. So I called the police and I was like, yeah, hi, I, you know, uh, need some help. I lost my phone somehow. I don't know if it was stolen or if it was dropped or what happened, but it looks like someone recovered it, brought it to their house. I used find my phone. I'm here. And they were like, sir, do not try to get your phone back. And I was like, no, no, no I'm in Williamsburg. It's, I'm, I'm not in a dangerous place. I'm in like a upscale hipster place. And they were like, sir, you need to leave right now. And then I was like, okay, my phone is quite literally five feet from me. Can you please come and help me get it back? And they said, no. And if I tried, I would be arrested. <laughs> really yeah That's trespassing nuts. and like they're like do not what cop wants to be like in new york i'm gonna go and and get into a hot conflict oh, over yeah. a phone Fuck that shit they're gonna they're, they're oh. gonna be like nah dude yeah. your phone's gone i'm not gonna potentially get into a shootout with some some you know gangbanger over your your phone go buy a new one get insurance next time yeah. <laughs> and then i'm just computer. like it's right there i'm like the other side of this door is my phone <laughs> i guess and i can't get it back and no one will answer and they would not and so I waited like eight hours or whatever. Nobody came out. Phone was just there. And then I just was like, screw it. I left. Mm. It's nuts. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Brutal. I wonder what happened to that phone. Probably got sold. <laughs> Smashed or something. I mean, they couldn't open it. 
Return now I have, uh, they have these security apps you can get. So I have this on my phones where if someone tries to open it and fails, it takes a picture of your face. Oh, cool. And then it That's uploads it to the internet. That's pretty cool. Emails it to you? Uh, well, that is one option. It can do a bunch of things. It can post it right to your Twitter. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yep. <laughs> this dude stole my phone. <laughs> but the problem with that is if you, like, if like let's say you, you're, you're like, Oh, getting out of the shower around, yeah. and oh, yeah. you're like fingers are pruning you touch it it takes a picture of your face and tweets it out and you're like you know, <laughs> just out of the shower or something <laughs> yeah be bad but anyway yeah so alec baldwin killed that lady that's you know, pretty undisputed yeah, well i mean undisputed. It, it's clearly undisputed but like i said i mean he's got enough there's definitely enough you know to to put put him on trial for at least manslaughter but it, they if they can't prove that if they don't believe they can prove that you did you know the crime beyond a shadow of a doubt there's so much politics involved in in what a da decides to prosecute and what they don't you know because it is bad for their career if they accuse people of stuff and then they don't convict so you get a like a good da has like a 99 percent conviction rate so they don't go after people unless they can unless they're sure they can you know nail them you guys someone made it. someone made a good point they uh they posted about this uh rukov said uh, that a YouTuber shot her boyfriend and killed him. She was not trying to kill him. They were trying to do a, a stunt where he would hold up <clears throat> like a couple books and then she would shoot the books and he would catch the bullet in the books or something like this, except the bullet went through the books and he died. She's in prison, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what? I mean, or no, it, it, she, she must be out of prison by now. She went to prison, though. Yeah. I don't... That, I'm not 100% sure that she should go to prison for that, because he was an active participant. That's the argument with Alec Baldwin. Oh, interesting. She wasn't an active participant in getting <laughs> shot. <laughs> like she, he wasn't act, she wasn't supposed Helena, to actually Helena shoot. Hutchins was telling him to point the gun. That's yeah, the argument he's point making. Point it towards me. She's filming. She's like, I want you to do these things. Oh, point at me and shoot. Is he, he's I, don't, I mean, oh, I, I got to... It wasn't in the script to pull the trigger. No, right. That's, I don't believe that. it. I don't believe it for a second. I think Alec Baldwin killed that lady. What was the double jeopardy you said with the Baldwin case that he couldn't be tried again? Was well, he yeah, char charged before? They I dropped the so. charges I, before. I think they were bringing oh. charges, then dropped them. What were the charges they dropped? Let's I think see. it was. Let me let me let me look it up. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I think it was the same thing, the Rust shooting incident. So uh, let's see. Background: uh, Union disputes and safety concerns. Look at this. The, like the boss is fighting with the staff. Has a meeting with the woman he's complaining about. Takes then then shoots and kills her. Yeah, but it was a movie, so that's fine, uh, dude. I don't I don't buy it, man. I mean, they were actually complaining about safety. Like, dude, the, the pieces lined up so perfectly for this to argue it's a it's it was a coincidence is just nonsense to me. She is complaining to him about the safety of all these guns. Well, that proves it. It was an accident. See, she was complaining about I, safety, I and did, then she died. I will not consider that an accident. Someone intentionally seeded bullets into his gun so that he would shoot and kill somebody. He, Ian, he had the bullets on him. They, they we searched him, and they were like, Alec has the bullets. <laughs> yeah, I mean, is, is, were they the, the actual, were they the same bullets that yes. go in the gun? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Alec Baldwin had the bullets. Let me, let me pull <laughs> I, this up. I, I don't know, man. <laughs> like i said i mean there's not really like i don't feel like there's a problem establishing motive or establishing opportunity or ability the um, record um it was an involuntary manslaughter charge dropped in april of 2023 and then helena hutchins also was charged with uh involuntary yeah, manslaughter they cited reasons for uh for dropping it was that they needed more time to investigate yeah, so they said they had new evidence yeah which is an interesting reason to drop the charges so i didn't know you could charge somebody and then drop the charges and then recharge them the same thing maybe it's because he wasn't found not guilty yeah, if you, yeah you have, it you wasn't to brought to be, trial yeah you have to go through trial you have to be actually tried not uh just dude i know i feel like if they open the can of worms on this and all the cast and crew a lot of them are gonna get would get popped for like firing live rounds on set at the very least which you're not supposed to do a lot of people will get blacklisted from the industry and and I don't know that necessarily they were committing crimes by doing that, but they were definitely violating um, policy, company policy. There was not supposed to be any live ammunition on set. Well, it, like with that too, I don't like. I don't think they'll go after them because there's not like you know, unless they recorded themselves doing it, like evidence of them doing it. But obviously, with the murder or you know, just death of her, there's the evidence that it happened. So. 
and then the shooting of the director who took one in the shoulder. Yeah. That um, was that was the same bullet though, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. It yeah, went through yeah, Helena Hutchinson. Same and, and, yeah. hit, so. hit him. Uh, yeah, I don't think I mean, there's any charges for that. I what? Know. I don't think there's any charges for that, for him hitting that guy. What I, were you going to say? I don't know. Why, why, I mean, why wouldn't they? <laughs> they should. Reckless endangerment, you know? Or, I mean, they could get him on some kind of battery charge or something like that because they actually actually did, I mean, he did he did injure him. And if they're going to charge him for killing the woman, why wouldn't they charge <gasps> him for shooting the other guy? Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Is he, is he, what are all, what are his, all of his charges? I don't know. It's it's hard to find this stuff though because they've rewritten so many articles about it. Yeah, it is. But annoying. the big news. So what? I, what? I, what? Like five live rounds were found, and I think a handful of them were in his gun belt. So I'm trying to find that specific citation. Hmm. But it's mostly been removed from. Uh, uh, yeah, he's he's he has criminal culpability in the death of Helena Hutchins and the shooting of Joel Souza. So yeah, he's they're gonna they're they're gonna charge him for shooting the dude too. Oh, okay. So this is yeah, the I first I've heard the, uh, that he had the bullets on his belt. No, we, well. we we talked about it like fifteen times, bro. It's or, just uh, been the first so I've long. Seen, yeah, maybe it's been a while. We've got to. I got the evidence. Yeah, because it was in the original investigation, and when that happened, it was like boom, there it is. Yeah, Alec Baldwin had live rounds on his person. I think that makes it open and shut. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I. There's, um, I think I might have found it in the Vanity Fair article. But they had, he had the... Two loose 45 bullets were discovered on top of a prop cart. A third was in the bandolier worn by actor Jason Ackles, and a fourth was in the gun belt worn by Baldwin. A fifth yep. was found in the box of dummy ammunition with Gutierrez. So he had armor. a live round in his gun belt. Live round. We'll clarify for the, for the show, but he had the, the, the live ammunition, the, the same kind of bu bullet mm -hmm. used for the gun was in... On his person. Yeah. I think that that it was in other another actor's bandolier kind of indicates that he didn't like if he did do it on purpose and he was the one that if he was in intending it, then that would have been like a red herring that he I just I just don't think it was I just think it's it's so dang crazy, but there is the reality of innocent until proven guilty that if Alec Baldwin really wanted to kill this woman, takes a handful of bullets, mixes them into a mixes them into a box, puts puts a couple in his gun belt, loads the gun, kills her, and then goes, But look, there's other bullets other here too. Like, it must have been somebody else. Like, crazy. Alec Baldwin pointed the gun, pulled the trigger, and then lied and said he didn't pull the trigger. And investigators found he lied. Mm -hmm. The gun does not operate unless you... It's a... What is it? A single action? Meaning you have to cock the hammer and pull the trigger. Yep. There's... He lied about it. I think there's a strong possibility. I think it's reasonable to assume the woman he was fighting with over issues on set, he killed. He's a hothead. It's a pattern of behavior. He had the means and the motive to do it. Yeah, punch the guy over the parking spot. But think about this. Think about this. Let's imagine that Alec Baldwin really wanted to kill this lady. Yeah, punch the guy, calling his his daughter a fat pig or whatever, or whatever he did. He's got a temper. But imagine this. Imagine he, he, he really wanted... Uh, imagine a scenario where a guy says he wants to commit a murder. So he goes onto a movie set where he knows that... Or, I mean, in this instance, they're on a movie set. They're having problems. Alec Baldwin decided he could get away with murder in his hypothetical situation. All he had to do was take a couple of the extra bullets and mix them into a box. And now all of a sudden, everyone's like, it must have been an accident. Yo, where'd the bullets come from? Why did he pull the trigger and then lie about it? The They're only thing, the only, the, this is all that matters. He pulled the trigger, killing her, and then lied and claimed he didn't. Did you, all, did you also remember what he said about after he shot her? He walked out and wasn't even like attempting to help her or anything. For like 45 minutes, in an interview, he's like, oh, I didn't even know she was shot. Wait, like, what? You pointed a gun at a woman, pulled the trigger. She flies back screaming. Everyone runs over like she's dying. And you walk out of the room totally oblivious. How do you not know that she's shot? I can't I, believe you I, said I that. Think, I think Alec Baldwin intentionally killed her and did not know how to explain his behavior, which was erratic and made no sense. So after he kills her, feeling justified and satisfied with having done the deed he gets up and walks out doesn't render aid is not shocked or surprised at what happened because he did it <laughs> now alec baldwin kills a woman intentionally right is he gonna go oh geez oh no how did i i just pointed a gun and pulled the trigger and she died i can't believe that happened if he wanted her dead he would know that she was going to die he would not react react with shock at her dying he would get up and be like yep and he'd walk out of the room 
And then he's like, oh, it was only 45 minutes later. I realized that she was actually shot. What do you mean? You pointed a gun at her and pulled the trigger. It went bang. She falls backwards. Two people got hit and everyone's screaming. I don't buy it for a second, dude. I, I, and then I, he has the bullet on him. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm sorry, man. The the whole, the, the I, I didn't know that she was shot. Like you shot two people and you didn't know. Let's talk about they Joe, had to be Joe Biden's son. He must have known. Well, oh, I, I do. He, he, he's lying about everything. He, I'm sorry. Like we got half an hour talking about it. He wanted to do it. Anyway, here's another story. It's Friday. Another story. <laughs> Biden to forgive another $5 billion in student debt for 74,000 borrowers just a week after announcing separate plan. Are you effective? Oh Affected. Yo, Joe Biden is pouring gasoline on this country and lighting it on fire. He's just going to, he's literally, he's just trying to purchase votes. This student loan stuff drives yeah. me nuts. I actually got my loans forgiven. I had been 25 years and I hadn't missed a payment, which I think is why. So they targeted me first, but now it's just, just total extraction of wealth. I don't know where that 5 billion is. If they told Fannie Mae or whoever these loan companies are, you're not getting your money back. That's a different story. But if they're printing 5 billion to hand it to these private loan corporations and they're just forcing you to pay back your loans early with that's ridiculous because it's costing us all money. It's costing us all, um, in, in inflation it's, it's devaluing all of our currency by printing money you know as we watch sports illustrated crumble and <laughs> bud light may be on the verge of collapse joe biden is just throwing money in the air while screaming yeehaw <laughs> the part of me thinks like we're gonna have to start rebuilding like we're building the parallel economy we better crank that thing up man because we're gonna need institutions of our own to help sur to, to, so that we survive yeah, and like for for someone like Biden too, it's like you make the argument that this isn't sustainable. You can't keep doing this. It's like, well, why does he care? He's not going to be around. And you know, to the point about like purchasing votes, like, I mean, didn't he, he already tried something like this also, and then it like got struck down or whatever? Like, these these people are going to like turn on him too because you know he's going to overpromise again. And you know, I just don't think it's going to work, but. Even even like the this plan right there, if if it does, like it's it's not going to be sustainable. You, but he doesn't he doesn't really. We know, had care. a you, you need people that are are willing to say I don't want the free money. Yeah, I, that's I just guess. not going to happen yeah. because the Titanic has hit the iceberg and everybody's trying to steal as much as they can before the ship sinks. Did you hear the theory that the Titanic got hit by a U boat? Got <laughs> got sunk. Okay. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> I, I want to talk about that. <laughs> The, the, the issue that we're dealing with is that all of the people, uh, a large portion of the people in this country are just like, let me extract from the system whatever I can as it's yeah. sinking. And Joe Biden is just making it rain. Yeah. And he's like, spend it while you can, baby. How do we instantiate honor in the in the species yeah. to be like, stop giving me this this money. I don't want it. Well, I mean, you, you can't do that to like kids that already are like, you know, have already got the debt. You're, you're not going to get kids that have, have signed on to what they assumed was the, you know, the, the deal. If I go to school and I study and I get a good, you know, get a good, uh, good grades, I'll get out and I'll get a good job. There will be a job for me. That's not the way that things are, are panning out. Um, and there's not a lot of great answers for those kids. Um, if they spent a lot of money on a degree that doesn't, <clears throat> you know doesn't have a, a job to go with it or there's no you know no market for that job they're kind of effed we so. we had someone call into the members only show and said that uh their significant other was a trooper in texas and that they've begun discussing fears of civil war because the biden administration may start arresting texas law enforcement uh i don't know i don't i we have not confirmed any of this and so j just the general idea is is difficult to bring up because someone's saying it we reached out and they're like no we don't want to talk about this we're done and, and maybe it's nothing maybe it's fake, fake news maybe someone was lying to us to uh try and sensationalize what's going on but it but the reason why it would make sense in either direction is that texas has begun arresting illegal immigrants and we have what is quite literally a fort sumter circumstance where the federal government is saying this is our jurisdiction and a state has deployed armed soldiers to push them out and say, no, it's not. It's ours now. So with Fort, with Fort Sumter, you have the Union forces at Fort Sumter and the, South, and the South Carolina being like, hey, get out. It's ours now. And then Union saying no. Now you have federal law enforcement on the border saying the border is our authority and Texas National Guard 
deployed armed soldiers to push them out, take control of the, the area and begin arresting uh, not illegal immigrants. Sooner or later, this reaches ahead in some yeah. way. Either it's going to be the federal government just gives up and then other states recognize the federal authority is gone and eroded or the federal government responds with force or something like that happens. I bring it up in this context because I'm like, everything I see Joe Biden do and the Democratic establishment, I, I don't see any, any long term planning. I see them basically just setting fire to the curtains before they leave. Yeah, I don't see the long term planning. That's it does feel like all like just kind of let's they're, do they're, right now what's good for now. No, they're like, <clears throat> OK, we're getting kicked out. Light it up. I knew a guy once who got evicted from his apartment. So he took Hershey's syrup and he squ <laughs> squirted it into the cracks of every nook of the yeah. building. Yeah, well, bad guy. And he was like, this will teach him. And I'm like, I think you already taught him by not paying rent. <laughs> but this is the idea. Like the Democrats, they're getting evicted. So they're like set fire to the whole thing. Well, I mean, you know, the the. Thucydides trap stuff comes to mind because the United States as a strong economic power with a strong military, you know, facing an up and coming China means, you know, conflict and the idea that the United States needs to be weaker, um, you know, or a managed decline. That's not something that's that's so far fetched or something that is hasn't been discussed. Like Barack Obama essentially said this, you know, said that the United States was was going to manage being not the only su not the superpower just be another country among many and that takes a certain amount of uh, you know of management to get to the point where the u.s economy is not the dominant economy and also some level of acquiescence because like half the country and i don't know the exact numbers is like screw that no we're maintaining hegemon we are going to be america first the greatest country on earth Try and take it, please, because you're not going to get it. Well, I mean, yeah, there there are people. And the, the thing is, yes, but a big part of the problem is this hasn't been proposed to the American people. There's no there was no like vote about this or or, you know, or, or you know, any kind of inquiry into, hey, America, do you want to start passing laws or signing on to treaties that actually kind of weaken the united states power you know over or its own sovereignty you yeah. know that, that we're we're you know uh, um you know listening to foreign powers like the you know uh, and ngos and stuff or or whatever like do do we want the united states to to sign on to those things and, and a lot of times the american people don't pay attention and so because the politicians that do sign on or that actually are the ones that are like yes we should plan this kind of stuff because they that stuff happens quietly your average person doesn't know so they get reelected and and also like if they had been like yo we're going to reduce the american hegemonic power we want to get rid of these american military bases and we're going to co-parent the earth with the chinese communist party with the russians and with the corporations I'd be open to that if you give me a plan, because I don't like American military police necessarily on its face. It's caused a lot of pain and suffering, probably unnecessarily. But you better give me a way that that's going to be better than the la the stability we've had over the last 70 years. They're already making the play that I predicted a couple weeks ago. Trump had received support from a mere 56,000 caucus goers, amounting to some 7% of registered Republicans in the state and just 3% of overall registered voters in Iowa. They're already pushing the narrative that Donald Trump is winning in the absolute minority, and they will use that to justify barring him from, from power. So my prediction was they're going to remove him from the ballot in a bunch of states. If they do, Trump will win the Electoral College. But the, you know, if California removes Trump, he loses 10 million Repu Republican votes. He was never going to win the electoral votes in that state anyway. But now he's going to win the general election with 40 million to Biden 70. And they're going to say, this can't be yeah. all, all the left is going to say, wow, no one should be president for own, oh, if with that little votes, this makes no sense. That will be their, their in essence, Cassis belly for why they're OK with the use of force to stop Trump from taking the presidency, even after he won the election. They'll say, we're not the bad guys. Trump didn't actually win. The system is broken. He only got you know, 30 percent. And they're going to be he's not the real president. That's what they did in Egypt. They already want to abolish the Electoral College. So right, exactly. That's... And you're going to have Democrats coming out and being like, this country does not want Donald Trump. The majority of people voted against him. 
we should not allow him to just use a technicality to take power and turn this country into a fascist dictatorship. They are already making the argument in Iowa, 7% of the voters voted for Trump and he won. That is not the will of the people. They're making an argument on quote unquote democracy. Is that a real uh, number? Yes. I thought that he he pulled what, 70% of the caucus itself, but that was only 7%. Record of low voter turnout for the caucus. It was cold too. That yep. day was yeah. a bad vote. Yep. And Trump got, uh, yeah, Trump, Trump got around 7% of the registered Republicans. Wow. 7%. And so, but, but this is how elections happen. Uh, what's, what's the argument? The Democrats, the Republicans who don't show up should have a say? No, you don't show up. You didn't vote. Abstain. There you go. Your vote was abstain. Well, not showing up isn't a problem for Democrats. They mail you a ballot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and honestly, that isn't, uh, that is worth mentioning if, if, you know, people are going to say things like, oh, well, you know, showing up, you know, blah, 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 blah. It's like, well, you know. Maybe they should show up if, if their vote's going to count, right? Well, Biden was saying it meant nothing or whatever. Iowa means nothing. But like he finished fourth in Iowa in 2020. And then, That's why. Uh, yeah, I know. And then also like he got like, you know, I, I think it was like 20,000 20, or something votes. And it's, you know, and, I don't, and he's the president. So I don't think there's going to be a Super Tuesday. And this is this is rough for us because we're, we're trying to plan this event. We want to do a big like live show in West Virginia. But I'm just like, man, we're going to spend all this money setting up this live show and like making tickets. No and... one's going to be left. Yeah. Well, yeah, right. No, Nikki Haley and DeSantis will drop out. We thought we thought Ron was going to drop out today because he announced a press conference or something. So the Politico announced he was having a press conference and he never showed up yeah. or he didn't show up for like mm. half an hour. I don't know what happened. Did he ever show up? I don't know. I didn't even see. I, yeah. I, I Vermin, tried. Vermin Supreme. Yeah. I tried looking for it and, and Vermin <laughs> Supreme kept popping he up. He sent his so. champion. DeSantis <laughs> sent his champion in, yeah. in his stead. <laughs> Well, it was funny because Laura Loomer was like, why is this man who posed naked with Mickey Mouse gloves appearing at a Ron DeSantis event? And it's like, it's a good question, but I don't blame Ron for Vermin Supreme crashing the party. Yeah, but either, no. either way, if he was invited or not, that just like speaks to the state of his campaign right now. It's, it speaks to the state of, state of his campaign that when Laura Loomer went to a DeSantis event, she got thrown out. And when Vermin Supreme shows up and jumps up on stage, nobody does, like he's, he's just allowed. He just does his thing. I don't think. I think the likelihood is he wasn't invited. He did his thing. Actually, there's, let's pull up the video. We have a, no, that's not the video. Where's the video at? Here we go. We have this tweet from ALX on Twitter. Oh, and, that uh, awesome. look at that. So here's. Party! 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 What did I say? Zombie! You say power! Zombie! Power! Zombie! Power! He's up there for a long time. What did I say? Free! Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, if he's like technically a protester and he's allowed to be up on stage, like that. He's just a no, no way, no way. Where's security? This is this is a DeSantis event. This is yeah. for sure confirmed. Yeah. There, BS. DeSantis is running for, for he's getting, he's going for the presidential nomination. Where's security? There's there's no way this was an accident. They let Vermin Supreme do this. Hands down. If, if the argument is they didn't know he was going to do it, they let him do it when he jumped up on stage. That's so nuts. Laura Loomer was standing in a room and they're like, get her. There's a video of a guy in a wheelchair saying nothing. And they walk up like, time to go, sir. And you mean to tell me that Vermin Supreme was able to jump up on the stage and start saying, when I say zombie, you say free or whatever. And everyone's just cheering for it. Yeah. Ron DeSantis, let this happen. Now, I, I got no issue with Vermin. I like that he mocks the system. So, you know, no beef. I, I, I question why he got naked with Mickey Mouse gloves. I find it to be very I'm just, strange. I'm just happy that he's not around the libertarians anymore. Vermin is, I think he's an anarchist. I don't know that he's like a far leftist. I think he's just like a, a core anarchist with like no real strong. He All of his shtick is, is about some kind of government program. And he would jump, he jumped into the libertarian. You know, but like outside of his actual character, if you talk to him, I, I've, I've, oh, okay. I, I know him a uh, uh, decently well like not i don't hang out with him or anything but like i've had dinner with him mm -hmm. and talked to him and his thing is basically like the system is corrupt these politicians are all corrupt we're gonna mock them ruthlessly and he's very anarcho like strip the government of its power he's pretty woke that when when the mises well, he guys probably went woke yeah when the mises guys kind of came in and, and took over the uh, libertarian party uh he is when he left because he was friendly with the uh the kind of woke left leaning libertarians that were in this positions is, of power in libertarian. But this party. is this is the this is what so many of these leftists do. They, uh, or I should say, liberals. The moment they saw, actually, I'll put it this way: they were never liberals. They were never uh, real anarchists or libertarians. They were always authoritarian collectivist crackpots. They publicly claimed that they were anarchist because that was the popular thing yep. to say. I want the government to not have power over your life. 
And then once they started attacking people and gaining power, they were like, no, we were always for that. So he's the kind of guy who, who it, it would seem just marches in lockstep with the, with the far left. Yeah. I think, I think personally, I think that, that he's just like, he'll go wherever he's allowed to be in the libertarian. Why was color. he allowed to be at a DeSantis event? I don't know. <laughs> I, That's I, why. I found the answer to your question, by the way, about the press conference. Cause I saw the original post that says, uh, Ron DeSantis is about to hold a press conference outside and, uh, he's late and le like letting the reporters stay right, in so the cold. Happened? Um, he said that he'll be back in New Hampshire on Sunday. He wouldn't answer any questions about uh, whether he'll be in the state on Monday or Tuesday on primary day. That's literally it. So he came to do a press conference and said, I'll be back. See you later. And that was yeah, it. Yeah. I'm, I, I, I need to understand how it is that Vermin was able to go up on stage without security doing anything about it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's so nuts. I don't know. But I, cause like we've seen the videos, uh, Matt Kim. Yeah. Posted a video where mm -hmm. he was like, I was just thrown out for no exactly. reason. They wouldn't even let him go to the neighboring building to have dinner. I mean, everyone, you know that there's a lot of personal garbage that's going on with this stuff. It's it's really catty. You know, who's who's saying nice things about me or mean things about me on Twitter is is a big uh, a big thing for especially at least, you know, it seemed like it was for the DeSantis campaign. If 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 uh, you, know, you interacted with them and were not of. Uh, favorable towards DeSantis they were they weren't looking to convince you that you should be favorable towards DeSantis they were looking to convince you that you were a bad person it's real disappointing because so. that's like people making fun of the DeSantis campaign is like trying to light a spark underneath the campaign to give it some combustive momentum and they're like and they no that burns the, stop they keep swatting your get hand that, away get yeah. that spark out of here it's too hot I'm really happy that Ron's losing and <laughs> <laughs> well I am because it's like at a certain point when you were like, hey, I'm a big fan. I like this guy. Why don't you stop doing this bad thing? And then they're like, we're going to keep doing bad thing. And I'm like, yeah. okay. And then they respond with, and you know what? Fuck you. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, no, that's okay. Exactly that's exactly that's right. exactly I'm it. out. See you later, guy. I had somebody like complaining that I didn't cover uh, Kim Reynolds endorsement like months ago. I'm like, okay, it wasn't like really surprising. And then also on the other hand, like, you know, it was a bigger deal the that, that week that you know, Rick Scott endorsed Trump over DeSantis, the sitting, you know, senator of a state and former governor. And like, they didn't make a huge deal about that. And then, you know, ne Kim, Kim the, 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 the uh, personality traits of the woke are the same as the never Trumpers. Yeah. They're, it's the same irrational anger, emotional. I should win. I should get what I want. Principles be damned. And so a lot of these never Trumpers latched onto Ron DeSantis and they dragged him down to the depths of destruction. And oblivion, yeah. and he's gone, and that's sad. it. He is a a sad laughing stock. You know, I'm just I'm, I'm I'm imagining someone being like Ron. I'm telling you, high heels. You're <laughs> oh gonna God. win. It's gonna pull really well. Ugh. I mean, it uh, it sucks that his his um, you know the the people that were speaking for his campaign weren't uh, weren't a little more proactive in trying to co convince people and be a little more friendly. But at the same time, like Ron was. You know, it's like talking to a two by four. You know, listening to a two yeah. by four talk. You know, yeah. Those those videos with like the painful smiles and like the robotic yeah. movements are just like ugh, they're too, they're too much. Because you know, and he's an athlete. We needed more of him in action, like physical action. You need a leader, and leaders have to be good at a lot of things. So uh, when we're looking at fighting, you know, Sean Strickland is a leader. We're big fans. He's saying some great stuff. He's defending the little guy, and we really respect it. He's a good dude. Uh, he's a wild guy and he's good at what he does. Should he be president? No, because while he may be the champ when it comes to his, his weight division and his fighting, when you're a leader, you need a bunch of different characteristics. So Ron DeSantis, let's say there's 10 categories that make you a good, would make you a good president. Ron maybe has two of them, very high marks and the rest are all in the gutter. So he was not the right choice for this, mm -hmm. but I am glad he ran. Because it would be a disaster for all of us if he didn't. He endorsed Donald Trump. Trump said, we're going to bring him into the fold. We're big. Everyone loves Ron. And then come 2027, yeah. Ron's running. And we're like, what have we done? Yeah, Our backbench is garbage. Yeah. We're in trouble. We got nobody. That's true. And people do credit the Florida legislature with a lot of what happened in Florida during the right. COVID lock shutdowns. Is, is keeping that state open was in part 
the legislature. Not and Ron took a lot of the credit for it, but I don't know who's, who's going to be the VP man. It's got to be Vivek. Yeah, but even Vivek no, is not VP. Like I mean, I think for success, it's got to be Vivek because no. he's grooming the next president. They have like the picks. most, you know, the most chemistry grooming. that we've <laughs> that we've seen on stage. I mean, there hasn't been a whole lot of you know Trump on stage with a lot of people, and especially former candidates. Uh, other Gabbard, than, maybe. I, yeah. I get that. Tulsi Gabbard maybe makes sense. That's that's what I. Yeah, I am not. I am not she talking. Would be great. The the idea that Vivek has to be VP because he's grooming the next president. No, 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 no. That's not what matters. What matters is, does the VP help get a new state? Am I going to win a state with this person? Yep. Am I going to win yep. a demographic with this person? And are they the kind of person that could fit in a role that is subsidiary and not very much in the limelight? Mm -hmm. Vivek is, 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 is a hot potato, man. He's not going to fit in that role. Chief of staff, perhaps, something like that. I don't even know if that's the right one. He may not want to work in administration like that. I Look, I you know would have, would have preferred Vivek be the guy to Trump, but like I think the re like he was at you know eight percent or whatever in iowa he's like five percent or something like that nationwide or lower like i don't see how he be how trump benefits at all by picking Vivek. It, he doesn't the country does, it's like kind of like aaron Rodgers, like Favre. they the green bay packers drafted aaron Rodgers. he sat the bench for the first year he was a nobody but they knew he was great and that he would be great so he brett Favre, you know just took it all. They all took it for the team. It was about the team and making the so team the best it could the be. The thing about him, like being at like 8%, uh, is I think because he's aligned so much with Trump that, like, you know, in the absence of Trump, I think that number would be a lot higher. Whereas the other candidates, the, the like, they are, their support is seen as, you know, opposing Trump. So it would actually kind of be confusing to me to like have him at a higher number because so, since he's so aligned with Trump, I feel on a lot of things that's you know that's where that's coming from and he's like actually i think he has some good like suggestions on you know like banning the you know cryptocurrency whatever that was and then also um you know with the pardoning of assange that's another suggestion uh that like he has told trump i guess so you're banning the cbdc yeah yeah cbdc that's what it was um, and you know, the day before he like talked to him about that, he announced that on the stage and <coughs> made that part of his policy. So I, I feel like someone like who could give him some more, you know, advice on things like that, that, you know, Trump might not know and help craft policy on that type of stuff, um, would be more beneficial. And, uh, Don Jr. Just had Vivek on his show triggered on rumble two days ago. I think it was two days ago. It might've been yesterday. Yep. It was Pretty cool. It was great to see them together, but it was remote and they were talking over each yeah, other just because of the yeah. digital delay, which was, you know, being in person. I think, especially for Don Jr. and Vivek, who are like high powered speakers, having them try and yeah. get through it was, uh, there were some rough moments. But all in all, it looks like they're deep in communication with the guy. I don't know if yeah. you need him to be VP to make him the next president. Yeah. Because he could just be a loud, like Tim, you're just saying he's a loud mouth <laughs> in a good way. He likes to speak and speak a lot. People he's are in order. People are also chatting about, there's like a lot of videos of Ron eating. Oh, like, yeah. Like a duck. Yeah. You know, it's like the Simpsons where Frank Grimes is like, he eats like a pig. He's like, eh, I'd say it's more like a duck. Pigs <laughs> tend to chew. And then it shows Homer like putting the donut in his mouth. And he's like, <laughs> just hard, like sucking it down. <sighs> it's painful. But there's it's like, like Kasich. People are posting a bunch of videos where Ron like will take a sandwich and just shove half the thing in his mouth. But no, I, I don't say what the I'm like the dude's on the run. Yeah, like he's he's, he's got he's got to go, man. I totally get it. You hand me a cheeseburger, I'm gonna be like, I'm taking that thing down in two bites. They do that Edit. stuff Edit. all the time. I'm not running for office. They do this stuff all the time. It's like when whenever like every you know cycle or whatever, whoever's running, like they get bad pictures of them eating oh, or the whatever. Corn dogs, you know, or like sticking the one down the yeah. throat. Yeah, I know? would lean That's into the Iowa all State of Fair it. trap. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. You got to chew your food. Like chew the only, the only, paste. the only reason I would ever really want to run for president is so that I could just go nuts it's, on the whole system. If you have, I would to. never actually want to. Run I don't for want office. it all to be in politics, but if I feel like the country needs me or the world needs me, like I feel like it's our duty as businessmen to go to that level next. If there was ever a point where I could actually get on the debate stage and have like a double digit polling, but not win, I'd go for it, and then it would just be the funniest thing ever. <laughs> I would like, I would show up to like the Iowa State Fair and I'd buy like five corn dogs and just eat them all at one, <laughs> once. I would take five of them and just be like, all right, everybody, get the photo. I just jam it into my face and be like, I take so little of this seriously, like have at it. But the thing is too, like 
it might actually backfire and end up working because it generates so much press attention, like yeah. in Trump's first term. Yeah. How he was just saying all this crazy stuff and then they were just like, run it. There is and then he ended up <laughs> winning, getting $5 billion worth of free marketing. <laughs> there, there is like the That's argument true. like there that that Trump was just trying to like actually do things that would derail his campaign. That was an what? actually compelling argument. Have you I heard thought. Michael Moore's argument? What? Trump didn't want to be president. Yeah. He was upset that he didn't get a better rate on The Apprentice. And it was um, <laughs> what's her face? They paid they paid uh, Gwen Stefani or something. He said some woman got paid more than him. He got mad and said, why aren't I getting more for The Apprentice, the best show? And they said, because you're not as big as this person. So he's like, OK, I'm going to run for president. <laughs> not going to spend any money doing it, but that's going to raise my profile and get me a better contract deal. And then he accidentally won. And while I don't believe that for a second, because Trump was planning on running for years because yeah, he, he, he registered MAGA and times. stuff yeah. four years in advance. Mm -hmm. But it was apparent. It is apparently true that when he did win, he was surprised. Yeah. And he was like in his campaign office on, on on election night. He was like, "I won! I won!" Yeah. <laughs> like that, watching, wait, watching that video of <laughs> him, like, I was gonna win. <laughs> as the votes are coming in, I he's like, video. "Oh man!" <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's probably the reality there is that everyone said Hillary was gonna win. She had everything. It was Trump was probably like, "All right, well, you know, we we shot our shot, right?" Mm -hmm. And then he won. Yeah. Oh man, talk about good days, good days. Can you believe that was almost ten years ago? It was eight yeah, years ago. That is actually nuts. Eight years. I, ago. I remember that night. That was nuts. Oh, yeah, it was so too. much fun. I'll never forget it. You know, like uh, uh, like 9-11. I will always remember exactly where I was and how it went down when Donald Trump won the presidency because it was, it was one of the greatest nights of my life. Where were you? What were you doing? I was hanging out with Cassandra uh, McDonald at the Sputnik office where she had worked. And uh, I I was we were, we were hanging out in D.C. So went up to the office and I was just sitting there with my feet up and I was like, cool, we're going to just, I, I don't know, I'm not doing anything else. And Cassandra was like the only person in the office who was pro-Trump. All the other Sputnik people were were Democrats. And it was funny how snooty they were being and like smug. Mm. And there was like an early report that the Trump campaign was planning to file, like launching a lawsuit against one of the states as the results were coming in. And there was one guy who was like, here he goes. Like, this is what Trump's going to do. He's going to lose. But then we were watching the New York Times had that meter. And it said like greater than 99% chance Hillary wins when it starts. And then throughout the night, it started moving. <laughs> then it got to 50%. And at that point, Cassandra's like tearing up and she's like, oh my God, yeah. I'm laughing my ass off. And then it got all the way, like started moving down the tears of all the people in the room so as they're crying. And then I'm just sitting there laughing a hearty laugh. And I'm like, I didn't vote for the guy. I just thought all of it was crack, crack pottery. And then he won and I was like, good. <laughs> This is what you all deserve. Mm -hmm. You have sat on your hands for so long and lied to the American people. You voted for Barack Obama and he blew up kids. And now you have the nerve to come to me and say Hillary Clinton, who is secretary of state doing all this garbage, deserves to be president. You earned this man. And I was just I was loving it. What a good day. Yeah. I was very much into Bernie, and it was devastating what the DNC did to that guy's me campaign. Me too. Me too. I was a, I was a big Bernie fan. And uh and they did. And so when it all came crashing yeah. down, I was another reason I was laughing as I'm like, y'all, y'all, y'all deserve it. <laughs> yeah. The DNC. Listen, man, people wanted Bernie. He had a lot of grassroots support. He should yep. have won. Yep. And when they ripped him off, people just got in line behind Hillary Clinton. And yeah. the fact that it failed and blew up in their faces was so funny to me. You yeah. deserve every moment of every, every ounce of pain, every smile Trump makes. Every laugh, he laughs. You deserve every moment. <laughs> it was funny. It was like a gut shot. I don't know if you guys, do you remember the moment you found out when Trump won that election? What were you doing? Yeah. I, was I, I was watching it live just like with my family. Well, well, I kind of knew once I saw Florida, like that that was it. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. that, that yep. was it. So. That, that, was the, that was the moment that night where everyone went, wait a minute. Yeah. This went Trump. He's going to win. Yeah. I, I just remember that moment when the New York Times needle went to the middle and said 50%. Yeah. And then I was like, he's going to win, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where were you doing, Phil? I was just at my my place in New Hampshire. Was and it then, like three in the morning or something when the results came in? No. When they actually called it, called it, or well, when he gave his victory actually? speech. But I think I think it was probably around midnight or something <laughs> when, when it was like mathematically called on most networks. What but, a shock. Yeah. You could actually pinpoint the moment at which Hillary Clinton's heart was ripped out. No, I'm kidding. That's a Simpsons joke. But she didn't, she didn't give a speech, right? She just disappeared, I think. No, she didn't yeah, give, she a, did speech. Not give she, a speech. Well, that's the thing. So she didn't have a concession speech right. written yep. is why she didn't give a speech. Wow. 
she was probably she she was probably hitting people, screaming yeah. like, "How did this happen?" I've heard she was drunk. <laughs> oh, she was hammered. I heard that she she had she had had a couple drinks before, and then <sighs> once it started to go really bad, she, the she never showed up started to the to venue go, at all. She never. She didn't show up to her venue. She didn't do a concession speech that night. I heard it was because she got drunk and was yelling at people. So <sighs> Putin but, doesn't drink. I don't know if that matters. <laughs> World I mean, leaders getting trashed makes me nervous. We're going to go to Super Chat. So if you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the show with your friends, head over to TimCast.com, click join us, become a member to support the work we do, and go to CastBrew.com, pick up Appalachian Nights. It's the best coffee you will ever have. You can buy it as a gift. And also, if you got friends who are big Trump supporters or just don't like Joe Biden, you can buy Sleepy Joe. That's our decaf. Uh, really, really <laughs> good name. Shout out to the TimCast members who uh, helped come up with it. And uh, Sleepy Joe. There's also Unwoke, but I think Sleepy Joe is way better. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can drink it before bed. All right. Let's grab some super chats. And uh, YouTube's giving me the business for some reason, but I'll do my best. Jerks. Uh, let's see. Josh Beam says, fourth. In fact, sir, you were you were first. But because you called it wrong, we're not going to count it. We're going to give the first position to Barely a Millennial. No, I'm just kidding. You're first. <laughs> barely a Millennial says, we had to put our American Eskimo dog Nina down today. The best part of being a kid is not having to do the hard things. That sucks. Sorry to hear. Yeah. Here, here. Rest in peace. All right. Kane Abel says, hey, Tim, did you ever find out about that Texas Ranger versus Fed thing? Or have any updates on that? I wonder if that would be the new start of the next Civil War. History often rhymes. The reason why I did bring it up, I didn't want to, I haven't tweeted about it or anything, is because if we can't verify who the person is and, who, and, and, and if the husband's in law enforcement, can't get a statement on the record, we don't want to. That being said. An individual called into a public show to thousands of people and said, this is a thing that is happening. That much, I think we will repeat. And then I will clarify, we do not have any confirmation outside of this. Uh, however, there are other individuals who are retired Texas troopers that probably have connections. And it sounds rather reasonable that this is happening. If you are working in law enforcement in Texas and you're being ordered to defy the federal government to their faces with guns... You may be concerned sooner or later a Fed's going to try to stop you. We'll see. All right. Manipal says, second of all, <laughs> wait, was there second of all? Where will the new North Poles be? Guys, go to Tenant Media on YouTube, subscribe, watch the Culture War podcast. It is Fridays at 10 a.m. live. We put up clips on youtube.com slash Timcast, but we all redirect you over to our friends at Tenant Media. It's a great little super group we got going on. And the show this morning was about a, a pole shift, which may be occurring. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. But uh, the argument is that periodically throughout it's every 12,000 years or whatever, the poles shift. This is a fact. What, here's, a, here's a really interesting fact from the show. Runways are being renamed because of the, the, the pole shift. We name runways based off their position on, on the, with the compass or whatever yep. in, on the earth. But now that the poles are shifting, it's changing the names of these runways. Because if you're flying using your instruments to find runway with this name, if the name stayed the same, the, run, the, the compass would point in the wrong direction. And so it's yep. like, but uh, that's actually happening. That's a fact. You can find that on like the U.S. government website where they're like, hey, we have to, the, the pole shift is happening rather rapidly. And so the idea is that the earth will tilt. And as it does, it wobbles, moves down, and then starts correcting the spin will stay the same, but the axis rotation, and I guess the argument is the poles are heavy right now, and so that'll cause it to wobble and then spin, but then correct itself and start spinning again, and I guess that would put uh, Antarctica at the equator. So it'll be the east and west pole? No, the poles will be north and south. Oh, okay. Right. But Antarctica will be on the on the equator, oh. and that would put uh, Florida on the south pole, hmm. I guess is the argument. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense that that would happen. You know, I mean, I don't know about how fast it happens and I don't know what would, you know. He said, he was saying like a week. Oh, that would probably like be. Like a matter of a, a day or, or or so. It happens rapidly. This eventful. means that you'll be in Florida and you'll be like, oh, sunset's at uh, 730. And then sunset happens and then the sun never comes up because the earth tilted and now you're in the Antarctic circle. Oof. Yeah. Awful. It's bizarre. <laughs> you're like, I'm cold now. What's happening? So one of the things he, he pointed out is that we found woolly mammoths frozen. Yeah. With food still in their bellies, meaning they were flash frozen. They were frozen nearly instantly. Hmm. And so he's he, he was pointing out like, or he was asking, what could cause a woolly mammoth to freeze so quickly that its food would be intact in its belly? More to the point, where did the food come from? 
if the woolly mammoths were in this Arctic region or whatever, or, or, or you know, minus 15, how were their vegetables around for it to eat? What was it eating if its stomach is full of vegetation? Yeah, the hypothesis is that it was in the equatorial area and it, there was plenty of vegetation. And then that whole area flipped up north and then and that's it, where they were found. Right. And so, well, th this is what he's arguing. I'm not a scientist. I don't know. But he's arguing that they're basically at the equator eating veggies. Within a day, the earth flips and all of a sudden they're in the Arctic Circle. All the plant life is dead and it's minus 15 instantly and they just freeze. They freeze to death almost instantly. Nowhere to go, nowhere to stay warm and there's no food and they're just frozen. And that could happen now. That's what he's arguing. Watch Ooh, the show. It was such a good show. Yeah, watch the show. Yeah, it was actually the largest live audience we've had on, on Tenet Media. Nice. A lot not, of comments. Not for the culture war, but for the for Tenet oh, YouTube nice. channel. The comment, a lot of comments are like, this is the best one ever. I Sometimes I'll see those comments on certain shows, but it's nice to see that comment over and over on that episode. It was great. Dude, Ben Davidson and Jimmy Corsetti, superstars. Wild show. All right. Nicosia Connection says, Tim, please have Vinu Varghese on. He's an attorney in New York City on the front lines. His recent case is representing Dexter Taylor, who dared exercise the Second Amendment right in New York City and 3D printed firearms. The culture war is on even in New York City. Great to work. Great work to everyone at Timcast. That would be a good guy to have on the uh, culture war show. Culture war show is a better show for when we're doing one on one stories like that. And IRL is better when we're doing news commentary. So there are a lot of people who will reach out and be like, I'd love to come on your show. And I'm like. We'll, we'll get someone who's a scientist and wants to come on Timcast IRL, but I'm like, we're not an interview podcast like Joe Rogan. We're a, we're a news commentary show. So we're looking for cultural and political junkies. But uh, that's why we decided to launch the Culture War show, which you should, uh, should subscribe to. All right, all right. Let's grab some more Super Chats. JK says, great Culture War podcast earlier. Thank you. Been watching both those guys as long as you. You need to let all that expand. Yeah, uh, the fascinating thing, about uh, Ben, he's not like it, it, it. He's not coming out and saying aliens and other crazy nonsense. He was saying things like, "Well, one of the I asked him if the poles shifted and Antarctica is at the equator, will it melt?" And he says, "Not necessarily, because we have tropical glaciers right now that haven't melted. They've been there for thousands of years." And I went, "Wait a minute, what? I didn't know that." Yes, mm. hot tropical glaciers in like Indonesia, for instance, that are high altitude, they mm. don't melt. Yeah. Exactly. So they've been there for a very long time. And I'm like, interesting. So Antarctica could move to the equator. There would be coastal melting, but lar the large ice yeah. formations Dude. may remain. How high is the highest mountain in Antarctica, you know, or highest peak? I don't know. You can Google know. it probably. I was going to say there'd be like a huge land grab for if it, if it suddenly just became that way. I mean, a lot would change, but all of Antarctica would be, would be like land, no? It, I, I, you know, part of me thinks it would be the coolest thing ever if Antarctica was at the equator. And just started melting, and there's a new frontier. Yeah, exactly. But only if after the ice melted, there was like an abandoned city. Oh wow! And we were like, when all this ice melted, we found Atlantis. I was gonna say Atlantis. <laughs> yeah. The highest point of Antarctica, Antarctica is Antarctica all the not time. that It's much. called Mount Vincent. It's sixteen thousand feet high. Yeah. Above oh, that's not level. much. It's not super high. Uh, that's like Utah. Roadless Travel says, if you're planning on going to the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee or just a fan of history, look up Roadless Traveled Wisconsin for information about the. Little White Schoolhouse in Ripon, Wisconsin, the birthplace of the Republican Party. Ah, very interesting. Hmm. Yeah, we are planning to be there for the RNC. We've got uh, we got some good plans coming. Some good plans for the RNC. All right, Greg Cutler says, Ian, I threw down $100 last year to just to shout out Ben Davidson and the suspicious observers. Glad to hear you got together. I'll definitely watch it. Dude, people keep telling me you got to get in touch with Ben with Ben Davidson, you got to get in touch with Ben Davidson because I've been talking a lot about the Electric Universe theory, dude. We were talking about that during these pole shifts and these geomagnetic phases that the moon can get pulled towards the Earth really fast and then pushed away, and the amount of like, to like just torrential uh, flooding and and like because the moon sucks the waves, it'll like make the waves get really tall when the moon's closer to the Earth. The the, the catastrophe. I, the guy's just absolutely awesome. I had no idea suspicious observers was as big as it is. Uh, I've only been following him on Twitter, so it's really, really great to see. M says, if the New York Times paper was to finally collapse, would we be happy or celebrate its end? Just says people are celebrating the end of Sports Illustrated. I'm torn. Right. But it's like, because it's been taken over by communists, we want it to be destroyed. That's kind of a scary thought. What if we took it over and made it run by, like, 
capitalists and pro America people. I like that. The part of me likes the fact that the you know that the progressives have. Uh, a place where they test out their ideas, and like that's kind of what I look at, like the Atlantic <laughs> and New York Times. Like they, the, the <laughs> go to the op eds, yeah, go to the op eds, and you can, you, all the terrible <laughs> ideas the left has, they're they're yeah, they're telegraphing all of them. Yeah. What so if what, these, go ahead? No, 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 finish. Well, these these ideas that they that they test in the opinion pages, these are what will eventually turn into policy. You know, what that's if, where the ideas come from. What if tomorrow, the front page of the New York Times was all American flag backdrop? And the articles were all about the history of communism and why communism is bad. I would subscribe. <laughs> That'd be great. I would I would subscribe for a year and I would deal with whatever they wanted to put yeah. out after that. I would deal with it. Yeah, true. They You're should do that it. New York Times. That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> They'll never do it. They were they were white, they were redwashing the Soviet Union while Stalin was killing people. <laughs> yeah, true. Like they're yeah, they they were they're, sy- the, they're sympathetic. Yeah, the whole Sibley, like the whole Sibley. progressive project, the whole first half of the last century, people were lying for the Soviet Union because all the all the intelligentsia, all the academics thought that socialism was the future. They thought it was a great idea, and they all wanted the Soviet Union to actually work out. And so they're all just lying for them. The New York Times, should, they had horrible people that were just covering for Stalin. It's awful. Yeah. J. W. Dickinson says, "I hope this is seen. You need to make a K cup coffee pod sampler so people don't have to buy a full pack to find out if they like mm. or hate it." Good point. That's a yeah. great idea. Here's a funny one. The real Hydro PX says, "You said this yesterday. Are you an NPC, Tim? Do you just say things to look cool and be right, or your insecurity?" <laughs> Hydro. <laughs> what you need to understand is, as one of our biggest fans, who watches every single episode. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> we know that the average person watches three episodes per month. That's the average person. And so that means somewhere around 60% of the individuals who watch TimCast IRL don't hear and don't watch consecutive episodes. So if I'm going to be talking about a subject and I ignore the core point of the subject, assuming someone's heard it, the chat will be flooded with, what are you talking about? So we have to operate on a light assumption that the average person at any given moment on a show has not watched the show the previous day. Yeah, it's similar to if you're talking about someone we all know and we're using first name basis, we got to use their last name when we're on TV. It's just a something you got to be a little different when you have the cameras on and you're this, broadcasting. I'll, I'll, give, I'll, I'll give you one example of how it's difficult to navigate esoteric subjects. The What we say on this show on a daily basis is an esoteric subject. You don't know the subject of what we talked about unless you watch every episode. When we had Vivek Ramaswamy on and we asked him about central bank digital currency, he did what many people do when discussing this. The subject is so complicated that instead of saying, here's what blockchain is, here's what Bitcoin is, here's what cryptocurrencies are, central bank, instead of that, he goes, the problem with CBDC right away is that you've got a government and I'm like, wait, wait, stop. What is CBDC? Oh, oh, central bank digital currencies. Anyway, the point is, no, 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 stop. What does that mean? And so he he says, I'm going to get to that. And then he starts talking about blockchain. And I'm like, listen, people don't know what blockchain is. I've, I deal with this all the time. It's not. But what happens is someone who knows and pays attention to every show knows that C, what CBDC is. So someone will come on this show as a guest and they'll say, well, I, I'm hoping Donald Trump calls out CBDC because we had a big problem. And then. 80% of viewers go, whoosh, I have no idea what he's talking about. I've noticed that on shows, sometimes there's the experts, two experts talking at each other, and I just want to listen to them experts speak. Even if I don't understand the words, I'm like, I'll figure it out later. Go full expert nerd. Don't assume, don't don't dumb it down. Just go full expert. But then other times I'm like, I want to watch more of a show which explains to the general audience, like labels, what they mean. And I just, I kind of go back and forth. There's different uh, types of shows in that sense. So you need to say something like, Blockchain is a digital ledger, a book containing a list of transactions made by people who are exchanging something of value. The digital currencies are essentially things you can have on the internet that represent value. Really simple. The government wants to create their own version that they would control. That would be a bad thing because it gives them technological access to all currencies. They can spy on you much more easily. They can control what you buy much more easily. They can ban you from stores or even from regions. Right now, they can do these things through difficult uh, measures with the federal government, court systems, freezing your bank accounts. But with central bank digital currency, one day, 
you could get a notification that you are not allowed to buy things within 50 miles of Austin, Texas, and they can easily control that if with a CBDC. Less, it's less easy with uh, the current financial system. But social credit scores, all that stuff, op it opens the door if they make that move. So uh, we say no. Yeah. All right. Scrody Johnson says, funny thing is Porsche is owned by VW, but VW's holding company is Porsche. Literally a loop. Hmm. Yep. That's so crazy. Very weird. Limited liability schemes. Yeah, all right. that is like, that's like corruption staring us in the face kind of behavior. Mm hmm. Tesla hack says on the topic of the casino and no one in charge, this Ian isn't correct. Decentralization also decentralizes responsibility. A web of interconnected systems is hard to hold accountable, unlike a singular leader. That's a great point. And that is the point I was dealing with. If you're so if you're having a problem in one of these big casinos and there's no general manager, that's it. Have a nice day. Like, there's nothing you can do. So when I had an issue where. I, a guy threatened to, to act. So what happened was I was in the poker room at Hollywood Charlestown and they apologized to me re relentlessly over this. But uh, I will use the poker terminology for everybody. And if you don't understand, too bad. I did what's called an ace high hero call all, uh, all uh, on, an, on an all in. Basically, we're playing poker. I'll simplify it. The guy is making big bets. I don't believe he's I don't believe he's actually got a hand. I, I think he's got garbage. So I call his bets. In the end, he pushes all of his money into the middle, basically saying, my hand is so good, I'm putting up $300. You have to have $300 to call me out. And I said, I call, I throw the money in, and then I flip over ace king offsuit. Not the best hand, but a pretty good hand. And he is- Is this all pre-flop? No. This is, the, this is the river. This is the end. He bluffed all the way down. He looks at what I have, and he just has this look of shock. And then he throws his cards into the muck, meaning he just gets rid of them. And then they shove all the money to me, meaning I called him out. He was surprised I called him out. He got really angry, came back half an hour later and started threatening to hit me and beat me up and smack me and insulting me. And that's that's a that's a no go at any casino in any poker room. Instant permaban. You go to any major casino. And so I was like, can I get the floor over here? Like, holy crap. They didn't. I asked for the floor several times. Finally, I got up and I'm like, yo, what the Went to, the, went to the guy who runs it, and I said, this guy's threatening to attack me. Can I get security? Or like, what's going on here, man? He's, he basically came over and said, chill out, shut up, and play the game. So I said, okay, I want to speak to who's in charge. There was no one in charge. No one runs the show. No one's in charge of security issues. Security guards came over and said, I don't know. What happened? And I'm like, can you guys like watch the cameras and see him threatening to hit me and all stuff? And they're like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and I was like, is there a boss or a manager of the casinos in charge? No. Each individual space has their own authority and jurisdiction. So if the guy who runs the poker room says, don't know, don't care, didn't see it. The security guy says, I'm, I don't work for him. He doesn't work for me. There's no other general managers. It only got resolved like seven months later when a guy who watches the show and worked in the food department as a manager <laughs> asked me like, uh, so they, they had an, uh, there was a Republican event using the casino conference space. And he was there and he was like, yeah, I hear you're a big fan. You play poker. And I was like, not here anymore. Not since that guy threatened to attack me and you guys did nothing. He went, what? <laughs> I get a phone call right away from the casino host apologizing, saying they'll, they'll, they'll fix it. And I said, fine, fine. Uh, I am once again boycotting them, however, because they stole $40 from me. Wait, the, so the casino host is like the top dog over there? He's a customer relations guy who wants to convince people to play the game. So there's no boss. That's got to not be true. I feel like they just lied that's, to you. Yeah, that's bizarre. Yeah, I, I, there's, there's no boss. That's son. There's an like, owner. Come on, come on. Who, who, who do you call when you have a problem on Facebook? Who's the manager you speak to at Facebook when you get banned? There's nobody. Yeah, there's none. So the whole system is decentralized. There, of course, is someone who's in charge of the casino at perhaps like a regional level, but they're not in the building and they're not there and there's no fun. You can't talk to them. So the only way you get anything resolved is. First, this one's really important. If you guys are ever having problems with a major company and they're dicking you around, be rich. <laughs> okay, now, after you're rich, it also helps to have 2 million followers on Twitter. Okay, Get followers. Okay. now that we've gone through that, followers. these companies will finally apologize to you. And this is the worst thing about our modern corporatist system is that the only way to actually be treated fairly by these faceless, gigantic, disgusting machines is if you can wield influence against them. And it's sad. It is pathetic yeah. that you would have to do something like that. But you know what? 
I suppose that's it. Let them feel all the pain of treating their customers like garbage because sooner or later they treat the wrong person like garbage and, and then they have to deal with that's that. That's why I'm drawn to mob rule because like I noticed that in 2006 with internet video, like the amount of people I could amass to make a phone call to one person at a, at a certain time. I was like, yo, I can command the masses with this technology real easy. And I wanted to, but I, I, I also realized how dangerous that could be and that I'm corruptible. And I was like, I, I got to just build systems that let people organize I can't, I can't try and be some cult leader pushing. I mean, but then the argument is like, if you're up against corporations that are screwing the little guy, maybe you do need a cult leader to step up and command the forces, the people to go make calls and to show up here and I'm gonna, say this and all that. I'm going to take this Friday opportunity to uh, whinge a little bit. And on this point, <laughs> so I was at uh, Maryland Live, which is at uh, Arendelle Hills, uh, Arendelle Mills, big mall, shopping mall, and they have a casino. And this place knows customer service. So we, there was, a, there was a, dis, a dispute we had over a bet on a table. The, per, the, the, the supervisor on the floor was arguing with us. I was, getting, I was getting perturbed, like not angry, but I was like, look, we're trying to do this. This is what we did. You can't push our bet back, blah, blah, blah. And then finally I went, okay, don't worry about it. Make the bet. No point in arguing. Thank you for your, for your patronage. And I was like, oh, that was very nice of them. At the same, at the same place, I was playing sick bow which is a uh, three die roll. You make a bet on what the dice is going to be. Very simple game. And I accidentally put more than the max down and I lost. And they went, sir, you bet too much. And they gave me half my bet back. Hollywood Casino, Penn Entertainment. It's like the gutter of casinos. We were putting down. So this is why we're currently boycotting them. And this is, this might be the final straw. We were putting money down on craps. It was Allison's turn to roll the die. There were only three people at the table. As she's putting the money down, they hand the die to the wrong guy and he throws them and the die hit the wall. And we're like, whoa, 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 no roll, no roll. Like we're still betting. And like, what? they're like, nope, your money's ours. And they pull our money. And I was like, whoa, dude, stop. You're out of turn. The wrong person threw. No, dead roll. They said, no, if you don't like it, you can leave. And then I said, if my $40 is worth that much to you, I'll never come back to this casino. And they said, it absolutely is your right to say that. And I was like, okay. Have so fun. don't go to that place. Don't go to Hollywood. Penn Entertainment yeah. runs these things. Uh, and, and I'll also say this too. Look at, look at what happened with Portnoy. They booted Barstool Sports. Penn bought Barstool, sold it back to Portnoy for a dollar. <laughs> he made like half a billion dollars on that deal. Best That's, deal in like the, of the 21st century so far. No, for real. Yeah. It, so Portnoy That's sells nuts. Barstool Sports to Penn Entertainment for half a billion. I think it was half a billion. And then... Not even a year later or whatever, they're like, we're going to give you the whole thing back for a dollar. Why? Beca because it is the, like, dude. But also, isn't that like fraud? For That's just no, like Portnoy getting free money. Yes. But that's got to be like fraud. They they So apparently what was happening was David Portnoy has no problem calling people out he disagrees with. There was an issue where Mincy, cool dude, by the way, was rapping on a show and said the N-word in a rap. They fired him. Portnoy was like, that's BS. I was pissed. I'm like, come on, dude. Mincy's a good guy. He was just rapping a song. Mm -hmm. They fired him. Dave is a good dude. Gave Mincy a job at his watch company. He had his back. I tremendously respect that. Barstool was freaking out because they were like, we are going to get denied gaming licenses in states because of hate speech and things like that. So Barstool was too edgy. So so I, I don't know exactly what happened, but what I imagine is, they went to Dave and said, will you buy back Barstool? And he's like, no. <laughs> and they were like, we are losing gaming licenses over this. We have to, we can't have the brand attached to us anymore. And he was like, too bad. You bought it. And they were like, will you buy it back for this rate? No. Will you buy it back for this? No. Can we give it to you? Okay. That's Smart. probably what happened. I don't know for sure, but he bought it back for $1. He got all the money. He owns the company. He hired mm -hmm. Mincy back. Bravo, dude. Penn Entertainment Hollywood casinos are the worst run establishments I have ever been to. So anyway, uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go uh, we're gonna go play in the snow. It's there's a, there's a crap ton of snow out there. We're gonna go snowboarding. Awful. It's it's terrible. The roads are shut down. There's a state of emergency. But my friends, smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. Head over to timcast.com, click join us, become a member, support our work. And I know there's always a people there's a lot of people who are like Tim gambles too much. Listen, my friends, <laughs> the salary that I take from this company only comes from the Tim Pool Daily Show, a show that I produce. 99% on my own in the mornings that I record that makes money. That's the money I pay myself. Everything else from like Timcast IRL, your membership goes to putting up billboards, buying commercials of Alex Stein, 
we did $25,000 in a commercial of Alex Stein trying to freebase coffee. That's kind of, so you might be thinking, wow, that's the <laughs> stupidest thing I ever heard. I better not give this guy money. Then don't. No, but that's you, awesome. Right. But if you like that we're doing those things, that's what your membership gets. We also, it enables us to do these on the ground shows. We're doing more live events this year. And so that, and then we hire more people. We're producing music. We're building culture. We've got documentaries and shows. So uh, support our work if you like it. You can follow the show at Timcast IRL. You can follow me personally at Timcast. ALX, do you want to shout anything out? ALX on X.com. Simple enough. I am Phil that remains on Twix. I'm Phil that remains official on Instagram. The band is all that remains. You can follow us on Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora, YouTube, Amazon. You know. Oh, wait, you know. And one more thing. Don't forget. The left lane is for crime. For crying? Crime. You know, those, you know, you know that saying they say, be gay, do crime? Yeah. The opposite of that is don't be gay, don't do crime. Yeah. I but think. I think that, that, that and, and I think that generally you shouldn't be gay or do crime. If, well, I mean, you can be gay if you're gay, but, but that's the point, crime. right? <laughs> like, I feel like they've made this phrase intentionally so that the inverse of it is something that we mostly wouldn't be agree. We wouldn't agree with because like the more liberal moderate person would be like, well, you know, I can understand why someone wouldn't want their kid to be gay. They wouldn't have grandkids, but we're fairly libertarian. Just don't do crime. It's yeah. not a very strong rebuttal. It's not. But especially like someone's going to bring up the left lane and then I'm just pro crime in the left lane. <laughs> lane. You're talking about driving in the yeah. left we got, lane. We got, we got to wrap things up. So All right, everybody. <laughs> Have a beautiful evening. I'm Ian Crossland. Great week. We'll see you again next week. Let's do this again. And definitely check out that Culture War episode from today. Roger, awesome, Roger, awesome Roger Stone on Monday. Pumped. I haven't met him yet, so I'm really looking forward yeah. to putting we're these gonna, puzzle pieces talk together. Talk all about elections. Good to see you, Alex. As always, man. Good to see Surge. you. Surge. Yo, Alex, a pleasure, man. Uh, as always, good to actually talk to you this time. Uh, yeah, I am excited for the weekend and for dealing with the snow and the rest of this uh, the storm that's going to be happening. Uh, let's just uh, go home. All right, everybody, we will see you all on Monday. Thanks for hanging out.